Time to take a stand, boys. Time to make a choice. Time to find our courage. Time to be deployed. Make our only stand here. Make our roads complete. All we waited for now, past the future meet. Get your weapons ready. Kiss the ones goodbye. Now our time is coming, and it is not the time to cry. We're going to fight the war on a Thursday. Last cast pre-Dragon Con. Oh, yeah. There goes those sirens fading away in the distance. What's up, everybody? Welcome, Arbonauts. Welcome to a Thursday night stream uh, here in the big city, September 3rd. Uh, it was a hot day in the big city today, actually. It was my first day of school, first day back in the job. So I was introducing, uh, you know, handing out syllabi, meeting all my students, and um, sweating my butt off because uh, that's what happens when you wear the full pocket watch, vest, tie, and you're walking around in 93 degree heat. So it was uh, hot. It was hot. This is what happens when you start school before Labor Day. It should be a law. That should never happen. But anyway, it's good to see everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, welcome to day three of uh, Shadowrun Hong Kong. Um, but we have a couple of special fun things coming up tonight, which I'll talk about as well. First of all, uh, as you've just seen, thanks to the awesome apples, um, you can help support the stream by tweeting it out. Exclamation point CTT will allow you to tweet out the stream uh, to all and sundry, which is really, really awesome. Uh, exclamation point ARVTube will get you over to my YouTube channel where you can um, check out past broadcasts of the stream exclamation point steam group will get you over to my steam group uh where you can hang out with the arvanauts in between casts and the like and last but certainly not least um exclamation point uh thank you as my wife just walks in and just drops cash on the table that's how we roll here in the wilson household my wife gets back from work and then she just drops off a bunch of just just some monies just some monies some 20s some straight up uh some straight up hamiltons it's all about the hamiltons baby um <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, um, but uh, so yeah, so exclamation point Steam Group, we'll get you over to the Steam Group. And last but certainly not least, exclamation point Arvtreon, A-R-V-T-R-E-O-N will uh, get you to my Patreon where you can join the other 25 who have $226 that they have contributed to the stream, which has allowed us to do some awesome things. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Who's the pimp now? Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I'm done telling you. It's, she's just she's the sugar mommy. That's what it is. That's that's the that's what it is. Pimp. You're the therapy pimp. Right. I'm I'm the therapy. When you're the therapy pimp, right? No, I'm the therapist. You're the therapy pimp. I'm the therapy pimp, and she's the therapist. Try to remember your rules. I'm gonna take. I gotta be very careful because this analogy is gonna go south very quickly. Yes. Um, exactly, Smacky. Drop cash. Walk off like a boss. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, so hi to everyone who's here, and I just want to say quickly. I'll say hi to everyone in a minute. But uh, Brahms, thank you. Um, I see that uh, I have received some codes of some kind. Um, hold on a minute. I see that I've received some codes, some game codes of some, time, of some kind. So let me just jump over there quickly and see what that is. Let me see what these are that Brahms, who is one of those, um, by the way, Patreon, uh, patron supporters. Let me just check this out. What's up, Shadow? Um, also, apologies, by the way, for a little bit of a later start tonight because um, I couldn't go live. There was some problem with the live broadcast or the ingest or something. And um, so uh, it wasn't just me. And Twitch support apparently just fixed it and they said, sorry for the blip. So I was like, all right. Well, that's all right. They fixed the blip. So, uh, okay. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa. Good gravy. Look at this. That is like... That is some stuff. Holy cow. This is a bunch of this, I think, is from... It looks like most of these are Humble Bundle codes. Um, and then there's a couple of what look like possibly Steam codes. So we got given, um, let's see, Home, Legend of Grimrock, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, Magica, Dragon Age Origins, Mass Effect 2, and then a couple of Steam codes, Ironclad Tactics, and Bastion. Thank you, man. Wow, that's really nice of you. That's going to take a little while for me to write those up. I'm going to put this down... I'm going to put this down at the bottom of this list. There we go. All right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to organize that more later, but at least now I have that in there. Okay, cool. No, well, some of them are Humble Bundle codes because I can see that some of them are listed as a Humble Bundle thing. Um, some of them are Humble Bundle codes. I can see that, but uh, okay. This way I will know about that. All right, cool. And I will organize it later. Thank you very much, Brahms. That's really awesome of you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brahms is, uh, that's no joke, man. Brahms supports the Patreon. He gives stuff away. But, I mean, so many of you guys have done so much for the stream. So, thank you so, so much. I appreciate that, Brahms. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Okay. HP code are Steam codes, though? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, right, right, right. That's right. But you have to redeem them at, you have to go to the Humble Bundle link, though, to redeem them. But, yes, yes, that's, they're not always that way, but they often are. And you have to sort of lean them over there. So, that's fine. Uh, so anyway, thank you, Brahms. Thank you very much. All right, so um, let's see. A couple of uh, things that I want to mention here. Um, I think I've talked about the Arvtran and all that stuff. So let me say hi to everyone, and then I will put my webcam on, and then I'll talk about a couple things that are happening tonight besides just the gameplay. Um, first of all, thanks to my wonderful uh, regulars who are here today. Thank you so much, Rogan, Trenday, and Smacky. What's up, Poke Dude? What's up, man? Uh, what's up, PKD fan? Hello, Mercurius. What's up, Pippo fan? Hello, uh, hello, uh, Hena Tokisu. What's up, Gray Dibbit? What is up, George? Hello, George. Welcome. I have something to say about George in just a minute. Hello about uh, hello to Dark and Wolf. Hello, Brahms. What's up, Bone of Malkov? Hello, Benny Hill. What's up, Bend Ups? Hello, Baron. What's going on, Bageltown? What is up, Arcades? Hello, Acclimative. Of course, my awesome mods. What is up, Thorg? What's going on, Shadowed Mage? What is up, Lego Freak? Of course, the awesome Kale Satobo, game designer, many other thing designer. Can't wait to show you and tell you all the other stuff that he's doing as well. And last but certainly not least, Apples. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so let me get rid rid of this and let me get rid of this and let me turn on this hello everybody welcome i hope everyone is doing well um hartford whaler hype tonight a little hartford whaler hype for my pre dragon con cast um so a couple things that i want to mention here um first of all uh let's see 
Oh, you know, Suze, you play. Oh, man. Okay, so just a couple of things that I want to mention. First of all, a uh, couple of reminders um, that uh, about scheduling. So tonight is day three of Shadowrun Hong Kong. Tomorrow, which is normally a Friday stream, I normally have a Friday stream. Remember, this was supposed to be the last week when I was going to be streaming on Friday. Starting next week, I'm streaming, my regular days will be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights with an occasional Friday night thrown in. But Friday, this week was going to be the last of my normal Friday weeks. However... I'm going to be in Atlanta for DragonCon, um, and uh, so if anyone is in the Atlanta, Georgia area, would love to see any or all of you. I just put my schedule up on my website. I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm going to be there flying in um, Friday afternoon, and I'm going to be there, uh, obviously, till Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and relieving, flying back here to New York on Tuesday. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are when the different sessions are. I have panels on uh, Middle Earth and uh, Westeros, Middle Earth and Game of Thrones, uh, also Middle Earth and the Star Wars universe, and we're actually, we have two panels of that because it was so popular. So the Game of Thrones one is in one of their largest ballrooms that they're putting it in. And then the Star Wars one, they have two of them and they just moved the second one to a larger room because of demand. So that's good. I mean, that indicates to me that we've got some uh, we've got some interest um, that's in there. So that's awesome. Um, and hopefully we'll get some more attention, uh, you know, going with that as well. So with that said, um, if you are in the area, we'd love to see any or all of you. Um, I will try to bring Arvbox. I can't guarantee that I'll be able to, but I'll try to bring Arvbox and we'll see if I can get a stream in on Friday. That will definitely be the last day that I would be able to stream in all likelihood. I guess Sunday's a possibility, but I doubt it because in all likelihood, Saturday, Sunday, and certainly Monday night are all going to be occupied with um, conference stuff, writing stuff, panels, all that kind of thing. So all that's happening over the weekend. So hopefully stream tomorrow. Um, I will do the best I can. No promises. Starting next week on Tuesday, I'll be flying back in Tuesday uh, afternoon. So I will be there for my regular Tuesday stream. So starting next week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is going to be the normal rotation. Now, a couple of uh, other stream announcements that people should know about. The first is, thank to, thanks to the awesome Patreon, um, which you guys were able to contribute to, I am happy to announce that we are going to have, once per month, a voiceover event. And in fact, there are several people in here who are going to be participating in that voiceover event. Confirmed already as participating are Trendane, who is in here. You will know him as the voice of Duncan Wu on uh, Shadowrun Hong Kong. Trendane is going to be back at that voiceover event. Joining him will be someone who has been watching the stream um, for some time um, and who actually uh, we had a chance to talk to when Warlock 2 came out because he did voiceovers for them and that's George Ledoux who has done tons and tons of voiceover this is a guy with decades of voice acting experience so we are very very excited to have him and we may also have another person that comes along with him I'll talk about that later on I don't have that person confirmed yet um, but we're looking to get that as well in addition Russ Guberman the voice of Kindly Chen uh, green eyes Mr. Burton little low pan going on he will also be joining the crew. And finally, and uh, you know, as if that weren't enough, also joining the voice acting crew as soon as I actually get a hold of him um, because he said he wanted to do it and then, you know, I can't get a hold of him. But when he comes in here, hopefully I'll be able to talk to him is our good friend Rob from Game Crashers. Rob, who has uh, a degree in acting, and Rob from Game Crashers is going to be joining the crew as well. So George, Trendane, Rob... Russ, and possibly one other person through George, but, you know, again, I'll have to wait on that, is going to be joining the team. And what we're doing right now is we're trying to think about what we want to call the voiceover team. The voiceover team will probably be doing a different game every month, I would guess, but this month they're going to be doing Shadowrun Hong Kong again because I'm still going to be playing it. So what we have to decide then is we have to decide what the voice is going to be. Now, we've had a couple of choices, we've had a couple of ideas so far. Um, I suggested the possibility of Miami Voice, um, as in Miami Vice. Trendane liked it, but thought that people might be confused because there's kind of an older reference. Um, I thought about the possibility of something like loud and boisterous. Maybe, maybe takes too long to actually get there. Um, he said if we were going to do a Skyrim only um, one, it would be, where is it? It would be uh, Thum Enchanted Evening. But sadly, we're not doing Skyrim only. Then we considered, uh, I considered the possibility of the voice squad, voiced entry. So I'm thinking about some, the Arvatox. The Arvatox. The Arvatox. I have to think about that, Brahms. 
the Arvitox. I've got to think about that. But anyway, if people in chat have a suggestion for what to call our voiceover team, um, which is going to be bringing you voiceover entertainment once per month, so long as we keep the uh, Patreon up, um, then uh, you know, let me know because I would be interested. So that's going to be the case. Also, what is going to be the case, and I'll answer that in just a minute, Lego. Also, what's going to be the case is um, that we are tonight, I will be taking nominations, and I'm going to do it probably in an hour or so. We're going to take nominations for the game that you guys are going to be voting on um, for me to play this month, because since we passed the $200 mark uh, threshold, that means that I am going to be um, choosing a game. I'm, you guys are going to be voting on a game for me to play. So I will accept nominations. Now, there's one nomination up already, and that is that we have um, a nomination from... Uh, um, from Kilobyte, who's not able to be here today because he's going, he's doing, he's uh, got a medical thing he's doing. So he suggested um, the Sega Genesis version of Shadowrun. He would like me to try the Shadowrun Sega Genesis version. Um, and so that is his um, vote for the evening. So I will throw that out there as a nomination. So the Our Vocalists. The Our Vocalists. Ooh, Arvavox. The Our Vocalists. Ooh. Hey, what's up, Red Wolf Gamer? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not dropping frames on my end. It took me a little while to get started, Red Wolf, because um, it, I wasn't able to go live at first. Um, but Twitch has supposedly resolved that in the last half hour. So, But there were issues before I went on. That's definitely true. I like that. What do you think about the R Vocalists? Is the R Vocalists up or down? The R Vocalists? What do you think? Up, down? What's What's the opinion? Uh, the Patreon widget is not live. Uh, what I did was I installed a special Chrome um, thing, and I forget what it's called, actually. But it's basically an auto-refresh um, thing, and I'm sure there's more than one of them. But I have an auto-refresh thing, and I have it set to refresh every five minutes. Um, and then I just window-captured that section. Um, and that was better. There is a Patreon uh, plugin for OBS, but frankly, it's super convoluted to get it to work. Um, and so I just don't want to deal with it. It's a pain in the butt, and it's not... I don't want to have to go through it on Arvbox, I'm on my portable rig, you know, I just, it just, it's a pain. So, no. Um, so I decided on this, but I really hope at some point they actually get an API or something like that, which would allow me to be able to do something like a follow alert, because that would be awesome. But in any way. Thank you, Red Wolf. Well, I was trying. Um, no, pl no problem. No problem. My pleasure. Um, and uh, thank you. Yeah, it seemed to work pretty well. Um, so that was the idea. So our vocalist, you nominate Bubsy 3D. <laughs> Great. So our vocalists, what, what does everyone else say about our vocalists, by the way? Um, and while you guys are answering that, I'm going to look and see what Lego said. What is this now? Texas State student rides her Barbie Jeep around campus after DWI arrest. Some people ride bikes or public transit when their licenses are suspended, but one back battery powered barbie g oh my god that's disturbing that's troubling i don't know so she rides around the car around there i like our vocalist the thunder cakes listen smacky i'm only gonna go so far down the thunder cake wagon okay i'm only gonna go so far um <clears throat> yeah i like that i think our vocalist may be what we ultimately do uh give me just one second guys while i cut down this this gain is this gain is too much. Mm, it's dark though. See, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm going to have to bite the bullet. And I'm going to have to get a better lighting setup. Because otherwise what it happens is it washes out um, the picture. And I, if I feel like I have a good cam I have a good webcam. The C920 is a good webcam and I feel like it's going to waste at the moment. Um, because of this problem. See, technically, technically the gain should be over here. And that means it's nice and smooth, no motion blur, but also means can't see me. Um, although I guess I could increase the contrast. Whoa. So bear with me just a second. Yeah, C920 is a really good camera. That's the gold standard. A lot of people have the C920. The problem I'm having right now is that I want to make it so that it's not blurry. And I think I've gotten that, but I'm it's too washed out still. Um, 
and so I've got it three box lights. Yeah, see, that's what I got to do. The problem is I, I've got to figure out, well, two. Th there's two problems. Number one, I got to figure out where to place it. I have like a kitty corner desk here. So I guess I could have a light up here and I've got to figure out where to place those lights. You know what, Red Wolf? Um, would you do me a favor? Could you send me a link to the box cameras that you got, like where you got them from? Because also, I mean, I don't have a massive budget either. Um, but I'd like to know about that. So that's the first problem. The second problem is I don't want anything else that heats up this room. This office is too hot as it is, especially during the summer and like the early fall or the late spring. It is It roasts in here as it is. So I don't want to overdo that. But, um, you know, we'll see. Campus here is just an office building. Oh, really, Ben? Yeah, walking. That's boring. <laughs> The thunder cakes. Okay. Um, so let me turn that up a bit more. No motion blur. Okay. That's not terrible. Also, I suppose it would help if I didn't have the, uh, if I had my baseball cap on backwards. But um, yeah, I got to get, I just got to get different lighting set up. Actually, because the room is reasonably well lit, but the problem is one of the big lights is coming from above me, um, and that's why it's getting this sort of shadow cast on my face, so I have to do that. I clearly have to do that. You got them a while ago as part of a green screen setup. Hey, hey, what's up, Samaria? Let me see this. Oh my god. That is impressive. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good God. See, I don't want to use a green screen, but I guess I could just use... Can I get the box lights separately? Wow. That's... Wow. That looks impressive. I definitely don't have room for all of that. I definitely do not have room. See, there we go. I definitely don't have room for all that. Oh, you're a working man again? Nice, man. Just hold a flashlight on my face. I totally should do that. I just hold my phone under my face. Good evening, children. Welcome to the Arvanots. I'll be your host. Holy cow, I should wait a second. Halloween has arrived, and the time has come to bring you with me into your journey into the beyond. <laughs> right, exactly. In the year 2000. Uh. Oh man, yeah. Maybe maybe I won't do that. Maybe you guys don't want me freaking you out. What is this? What is this? Let me see this. Holy what? Is that your? Whoa! What is that setup? Look at that. <laughs> Please do this for Halloween. I sh I totally will do that for Halloween. That's gonna be fun. That look at that link. Holy crap. Is that your... Do, Sat, is that yours? Is that your setup, Satobo? Don't tell me that's your setup. Is that your setup, really? Really? You you leave here... So, let me get this straight, Satobo. You leave here, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to get the greatest setup of all time. Is that what happened? Is that what just happened? Dude, for real, though, that's like... I don't... Oh, it's not yours. Okay. <laughs> I was like... I was about to be super impressed. Oh, that's him? Okay. Wow. Oh, congratulations, Samaria. Got a job at a local hobby shop. Nice, dude. That's awesome. 
I know, I know, right? I mean, I have a three... Listen, I've got a three monitor set up here myself. Um, I have a three monitor set up here myself, but I don't... You know, but I certainly don't have the box lights. Um, now, the other question is, and then I promise we're going to get started playing. The other question is, the box light thing... Are they blinding though? I mean, I've I've been I've done I've seen some video shoots and things like that, and I know it's kind of a soft light. But I mean, are they blinding? Like, if I put the you know lights back here, is it going to be like, am I, is it going to like destroy my eyes over time? Like, what what I'm curious about like how, I don't know how bad the white light is for your eyes ultimately. I feel like if you're a caster, streaming on one monitor alone is very difficult. I do it when I'm using Arvbox. And it takes a lot of movement and manipulation and like fiddling. Honestly, this three monitor setup is awesome. I basically have you guys on my right monitor. Um, Twitch chat is over there. My chatty program is next to that. To the left of that is where I put OBS um, most of the time. And it's also where I have my audio file folder where I play my audio stuff. And then on the left, I've got the Patreon window. That's also where I put up like website stuff. So like when we're playing the Fighting Fantasy game books, I put that stuff there. And then my main monitor in front of me is where I actually have the game. So I love this i love this the box lights aren't blinding at all unless you stare right into them or put them right in your face <laughs> i could just see my doing that so then chat ah! and then it'll be like what happened to arv well he went blind what why well he wanted better lighting everyone's like well kappa you have three monitors set up one screen's chat one streaming software and screen caps one from his one play yeah 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 it just works really really well so if okay so if you don't have bright light behind your monitors though like could you have it from the side because i do have room where i could set up a box light i could put up i could assuming it's not expensive i could put a box light to my left and shine it like this i could do that and it would be over like it'd be to my to my left not in front of me it would be to my left i could do that so and i guess i could i don't really have room on my right to do that so tolbo has seen my setup actually so he knows how big the room is. Thanks, Ben. Well, it's just the problem is this thing, like this shadow. Because what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to... Let, let me show you exactly where the gain should be. The gain for my webcam should be set all the way to the left to get the maximum speed. And to the left would be... I'll show you as an example. It should be here. That's where the gain should be. When you do that, you can see that the... And actually, the exposure should be down this, this way. You can't really see it now. But honestly, like the exposure being like this, there's no blur. You get sort of like a quit. It's, it looks really, really awesome. The higher up you turn the gain, the more that this has a tendency to slow down the, the camera a little bit. You can kind of see. So you want it to be lower um, rather than higher. But then you got to balance that out, obviously, because you don't want shadows on your face because it just doesn't, doesn't look good. So I don't want this to be washed out is basically the issue that I'm running into. Might use a bounce card to reflect it towards you. Okay, okay. Tape aluminum foil to underneath your baseball cap lid. <laughs> Psst. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I will think about it and I will uh, I will consult further. But uh, with that said, you guys all came here for games. So let's get into it. Let's get into some Shadowrun. And uh, yeah, let's, let's make the madness happen as we continue to run into the shadows. Let's do it. Tap lights everywhere! One on each side of the room, one on your desk above you, angle down a bit. Okay. Ooh, I'm actually going to favorite that. I'm going to add that as a bookmark, and I'm going to look at that later, Rogan. Okay, let's do it. Shadowrun Hong Kong! Possibly, I have to look at it. But it looks like that light is sort of around the outside, though. You know? Just can't get over how good the music is. Really can't. It's so good. I mean, we can argue about whether this is better than Dragonfall, worse than Dragonfall, but the music is definitely better, and that's nothing against Dragonfall. It's just the music's so good in this. So, so good. All right. Let's do it up. So, we got through quest number one. 
and uh, mission number one, I should say. So I got to check the mission computer. Um, you know, I got to check in on the BBS. Then I got to talk to the Shadow Runners, and then I got to uh, get some rest. That's my optional quest. And then I'm going to go on my second mission. So. Yeah, I I got to figure out. I just got to figure it out because I feel like I feel like I don't want the picture to be washed out, um but I also don't want it too dark and uh you know. So I don't know. I'm just I'm playing around with possibilities basically. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for stopping by Red Wolf. Thanks for the uh thanks for the uh comments, suggestions, etc. Alrighty. Let's take a look. Ooh, new music. Alright. Let's check your inbox for messages first. About those dreams. Gobbit's face winks onto the screen. Her rats are perched precariously in her head and she holds a laser pointer clutched between her thumb and forefinger. Oh, hey, Seattle. I hope that I didn't catch you at a bad time. She flicks the laser pointer and her rat's head swivel to the right to follow the motion. Why did I just say that? This is a recording. It doesn't matter if it's a bad time. Well, uh, anyway, I was thinking about that talk that we had. You know, the dream talk about the nightmares and stuff. Another flick of the pointer. The rat's heads turn left, their noses twitching. I've got a friend here in town. She runs the parlor of five phases. It's sort of our local magic shop and talismonger. Name's Crafty. I've already been to Crafty's. It's the second person who's like, hey, go check out Crafty. I already, I'm, a, so, I'm so ahead of you. I'm going to Sherlock Holmes this instance, man. IAK Enforcer! Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen! It is Mr. IAK Enforcer himself. What is up, dude? How was the trip? IAK just got back from a triumphant tour of Greece, by the way. Uh, IAK went over there and he actually solved a lot of Greece's economic problems. He was um, asked over as a special economic advisor. So he went over and he solved a lot of Greece's problems. So I, I don't think we're going to have to worry about that anymore. So first of all, congratulations on solving the problems, IAK. How you doing, man? Anyway, she's smart. Really smart. Her mouth, her mom was sort of a local authority on all things magical, and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Thank you, Shadow. If you wanted to ask anyone in town about these dreams, she'd be the right one to choose. She taps a button on the laser pointer with her thumb, and the little red dot at the tip goes dark. The rats immediately tackle one another, rolling off her head and falling out of sight. She gets up, her head rising out of frame. Anyway, just thought it might help. If you've already been talking to Crafty, please disregard this message. All right, I'm out. Peace. She punches a button and the screen goes dark. Only IAK can save Greece, Rogan. Only IAK. That was the key. It's good to see you, IAK. How you been, bro? Welcome back, sir. I hope that uh, Greece was enjoyable. Tending a party. You solved everything with backhand slaps. <laughs> Whoops. Slap. Slap. Thundercake, I need you to come to the parlor. A friend and business partner of mine named Dr. Shen Yang has need of your services. Something about attending a fancy party in Repulse Bay. He was unwilling to give me the details. I think he wanted to size you up himself. Okay. Raymond Black's history, from Isabel to Thundercake. Duncan asked me to do some digging on my own into Raymond's history. I guess he doesn't trust Kindly Cheng to give him the full story. I can't say I blame him, since she'd hide things from us if it was in her best interest to do so. So I've been poking around various corners of the matrix trying to dig up what I can. Most sinners leave a data, data rail, uh, sorry, data trail the size of an aircraft carrier in their wake. Working backward in time, Raymond starts out that way, but it slowly tapers away into nothingness. Sure, I can find some basic records in Seattle. Power, utilities, a couple of public discussion sites he signed up for. But the further back I get, the less I find. And the craziest part is this. Prior to 2032, I can't find anything at all. And that shouldn't be possible. It's like Raymond didn't exist before then. I don't know. I'm going to keep digging, but it'll take me a while. I'll let you know when I get some news worth sharing, Isabel. I was thinking the same thing, right? Shoot, fancy party. Woohoo! Oh, man. All right, let's see. Um, let's look at the BBS. Relevant keywords. Police shoot at Victoria Harbor. I know a lot of you were interested in that 50,000 the HKPF is promising in connection with the terrorists sell their hunting, so I've been digging around for some better information. I think I've got some stuff of value. Turns out they had a handler here in Hong Kong by the name of Raymond Black. The HKPF tried to take him into custody the day before, but were forced to kill him in a shootout. Looks like Black and the terrorist are members of the White Star Group out of Henan. Warfrat. 
Isn't White Star all about restoring Imperial China? One of those terrorists they killed was obviously North American. Why would she be helping a pro-imperialist group, Brother Six? You got money, you can buy any kind of person you need. You're on Shadowlands, Omei. You should know that. Fang Wang. So what do we know about Black and his band of thugs? Anything we can use to track them down? Oh, great. So the other Shadowrunners are after me now? It's freaking punks. This is like Anonymous going after me, man. I like Anonymous. Don't go after me. The data I've been able to dig up says that Black was from Hinan and was distantly related to the royal family. He spent a couple of decades in Seattle making connections in the shadows in preparation for an attack on the Free Enterprise Zone. I've attached some dossiers and his remaining agents. Rolling Thunder. You sift through a long stream of data detailing who you and Duncan are. While the general details about your name and life are correct, many of the small details are wildly inaccurate. You are listed as having lived in Laos for the past four years, while Duncan is noted as having spent most of his life in prison. You move on to peruse Gobbet and Isabel's ostensible biographies. The dossier lists Gobbet's real name as Yushun Gui, and her place of birth is Shan Shaxi. According to the contents, she is 23 years old and served the Baihu corporate military until conviction for insubordination led. Lead! Led. To her dishonorable discharge. While you can't be certain Gobbet doesn't speak Mandarin, the idea of her being in the military, any military, is downright laughable. Isabel, in turn, is lifted as Fatima Abukar. Apparently, Isabel was educated in early age in terrorism and piracy by the revolutionaries of the Ethiomalian territories and is wanted in connection with the bombing 2052 bomb attack on the French embassy in Johannesburg. Given that you know that Isabel grew up here in Hong Kong, this information appears to be as laughably inaccurate as your own dossier. Okay. But the posy bash. All right, folks, we're trying it again, this time under a super secret code name. There's no telling how long this lasts, so let the bashing begin, Matrix Bard. Super secret code name? You just ran the words poetry slam through a thesaurus. Poetry people, not complaints. A thief on the run, the silencer in the dark, the rat shaman lurks. Got one for the coyote shamans, too. An unbound trickster, the shaman fears no peril, wily coyote. On a roll, Jivey. Here's another one if Mad can stand it. Okay, sounds good, Trendane. Pulses of light glance off bright chrome. Translucent spheres encase my treasure mirrors and tubes and neon implode. Another day in the Matrix, Tennyson. Hey, I can do traditional. I happen to prefer the haiku because less typing. Gossamer tresses, infinity in your gaze, very pointed ears. <laughs> Extra points for using gossamer correctly in a sentence. I like elves. Jivebird is still the master of the haiku, in fact. Oh, graveyard creeper, ashen skin, spindly fingers, and claws freak me out. All right, Shakespeare, this is strike two. This thread is getting locked and you aren't doing this again, got me? This board is for deckers who want to talk shop. There are plenty of other forms that you can use for your stupid amateur poetry. I'd suggest you go find one, Sisop. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't keep it going, man. I like those. Alright, sublet. Available immediately. Like the title says, good location, cheap rent, serious offers only, please. Harbor at. What do you mean by top shelf? Is it a fancy corp condo? How'd you manage that? Shenzhen Joe. Nah, man. It's literally the top shelf of the converted maintenance closet I live in. You're joking. No joke, it's cheap and the location's good, right near the Temple Street Night Market. And it has su it's has super fast access, just in case you need to get in and out of the Matrix quick. I'm not the sort to ask questions. There's just about enough space to stretch out your legs lying down, and there's a ceiling hook for your gear. What do you say? I don't know, I need a place, but still. A shelf in a shared closet? Screw that, I got a sweet pad to rent that you can have all to yourself. It's not Victoria Peak or anything, but it's a bargain. Where's it at? Kowloon Walled City. It's one of the new construction units on the outer edge. I'll throw in a second ceiling hook deal. Okay, message me and we'll work out the nitty gritty. Seriously? The walled city isn't that bad. My apartment is huge and it even has windows. I'll beat Harbor Rat's rent. In fact, just tell me what you want to pay. Hello? Oh my god, they're like, walled city, nope. Looking for Decker. Looking for experienced Decker for a discreet milk run on a supply house for purveyors of recreational substances. Potential for a longer term arrangement. We're a team that's been together for years running your basic heist and the occasional transport gig. Hey, Sir TV, what's up, man? We've got a reliable fixer and long list of happy clients. Requirement, you must have a good sense of humor. Give me some Nuyen 888. Hey, are you willing to give a newbie a shot? I've been in and out of Matrix since I was in school. I raised some creds doing odd jobs, so I've got a hot new cyber deck that I'm itching to try on a real run, Amazon. I don't know, man. We'd really, really like to find a long-term decker, and you kind of don't know shit. You said so yourself. Sorry. Oh, come on, you said it was a milk run. How else did a Shadowrunner start if not with an easy gig? I'm being up front with you, doesn't that count for something? Fine, I got a test for you. You hack this guy, Captain Scone, and change his password to erotic massage. I'm on it, thanks. Done, am I in or what? Say yes, say yes. What the fuck? Amazon, may I introduce you to our rigger, Captain Scone? You'll make a fine addition to our team. Thank you, you won't regret this. You gotta stop peeping to hack me, Gimme, or you'll be looking for a new rigger next. Aw, oh, you know that you love me. That's funny. All 
Alright, I already did that. Okay. Pending jobs. Let's check this out. Thundercake. Okay, so I gotta go get that. And then I got an active... Active jobs, the ones I'm doing. So I've got Serial Killer, the Geomantic Sabotage, and they got the Fancy Dress Party thing. Yeah. I have a place in Walt... Nope. Exactly. That's fair, Mercurius. That's that's a good way to look at it, yeah. Okay, so far so good. Now it's time to chat with some of the runners. Let's see what Ractor has to say about things. Sup, Ractor? Ractor's shop is sweltering hot, even more so than it was the first time you stepped inside. The whir of actuators accompanies the fine motions of the manipulator arms that hang from the ceiling. They are turning an object over and over in their articulated hands, soldering wires and hammering rivets. Ah, my friend. Welcome back. Rockter touch types a series of commands into his bracer and the arms relax into an idle posture. He smiles at you, his cigarette dangling from his lip. There, that's better. Now what can I do for you? Any thoughts about that last run? An interesting diversion. The, uh, mummies that we encountered were fascinating. Dead flesh reanimated by the controlling will of an astral being bound within. Of course, the notion that these creatures are genuine reincarnations of long-dead humans is ludicrous. There's nothing innately magical about human consciousness. The soul is an antiquated concept rooted in wishful thinking. Thankfully, your deal has earned us the means to summon one of these entities. I should like to study it. Dissection would be best, but given these circumstances, I suppose that external observation will do. Good work all the same. My notes will be the richer for it. Now, what else would you have of me? How are you getting along with the other members of the team? Perfectly well, thank you. They all seem competent enough. Oh, wow, Stevie, that's a ton. They all seem competent enough, and there hasn't been any major personality conflict so far. He rubs his chin thoughtfully. So long as they continued performing to an acceptable standard, I can see no reason not to continue our arrangement. It's good to run with the team again. Sure, all right, but what do you think of them personally? They're fine, I suppose. All fine. Gobbit is quite charming, Isabel keeps to herself, and Duncan is doing his best in a bad situation. And that's, I'm afraid, is all that I have about to say. Apologies if you were looking for more. You're still something of a mystery to the group, Ractor. Mind if I ask you a few questions? No, I don't mind. Not at all. I can't promise that my answers will satisfy your curiosity, of course, but you may certainly ask. What was it like growing up in the Russian Republic? Tumultuous, as you might expect. You probably aren't old enough to remember the Euro Wars, but I am. I'd like to hear about them. My country was the instigator of the first Euro War back in 30. I remember the rhetoric, the hardships of living under a wartime economy, the rampant xenophobia that took hold. I remember how we all cheered when our forces invaded Poland. Three months. That was all that it took for our military to crush what meager resistance the Poles could bring to bear. It was quite the source of national pride at home. I remember our drive into Germany and the desperate bid to reclaim the eastern portion of that country for ourselves. Just think about the symbolic significance of such an act. An audacious move, to be sure, but Secretary Kropunin was determined to make history. So what happened? Did the German military stop you? No, the Night Wraith incident did. Night Wraith? British made fighter bombers with stealth capabilities. Very state of the art, very powerful. At least that's what they were purported to have been. Nobody has ever come forward to accept responsibility for the attack. Regardless of who was behind it, the result was the same. Wave upon wave of bombings that targeted our forces and the Germans alike, coupled with the assassinations of dozens of military leaders. A devastating, synchronized operation, expertly carried out over the course of a single night. At home, viral attacks shut down our power grids. Hundreds of thousands of Russian homes found themselves without heat or electricity in the dead of winter. Koshai scuttles forward, allowing the rigger to rest his hand on the sloping metal of its chassis. Ractor stares at his own deformed reflection in the metal of the drone's body, a sad smile on his face. I remember huddling under a mountain of cheap blankets that my mother had piled up on my bed. They did little to protect me from the cold, but they were something that I could hang on to. Something tangible that I associated with warmth and comfort and home. There, as my body trembled and I watched my breath frost over, a horrible truth descended upon me. We had caused this. We were the villains of the First Euro War. For the first time, I came face to face with what Kropunin's folly had brought us. And there, under that ridiculous heap of rags, I came to realize what would surely come to pass. The world thought us villains, and so they would treat us like villains. We would be pariahs on the international stage, crippled by retributive sanctions. We would never live down the shame. And then the AFA invaded Greece and Spain, sparking off Euro War II. We redeployed our troops to help repel them, and all was made right again. 
I have to imagine you still had enemies in Poland and Germany even after the start of the Second War. Oh, we were still regarded with suspicion, of course. But all of Europe might have fallen if it hadn't been for our help. In essence, we took back our reputation at gunpoint. Not an ideal solution, I admit, but it worked. Within the span of four months, we Russians had gone from nobodies to a terrible threat to unlikely saviors in the eyes of the Western world. Studying exactly how this happened has taught me a great deal about human psychology and social dynamics. Well, at least you took something away from the experience. Indeed, there are lessons everywhere if only we stop to look from them. But I have gone on for too long about this already. I must be boring you. Shall we talk about something else? Surely there are more interesting and relevant things to discuss. You mentioned that the Second Euro War was sparked off by the AFA. Who were they? Ah, yes, I suppose that you wouldn't know. They were only active for the years surrounding the conflict, after all. The AFA was the Alliance for Allah, serving under Mullah Sayyid Jazir, a coalition of right-wing Middle Eastern governments that assembled after the failure, some say, sabotage of the United Islamic Conference. They looked to a weakened Europe and saw an opportunity, one that my country was entirely responsible for creating. Let's see. So the AFA invaded Europe, but Russia was really to blame? Yes. I cannot blame the AFA for acting as they did. Ultimately, they chose the same path that any hawkish power would have taken. Given their circumstances, it would have been foolish of them not to. My country, on the other hand, was guilty as sin. We're the ones who blazed the trail. So what happened? How did the war end? The AFA folded in 37 after Jazir's assassination. A lucky thing for us, too. The body count could have been a great deal higher. In the years that they were active, the AFA gave us a hell of a fight. Did you emigrate directly from Russia to Hong Kong? No. Between my years in Nizhny Novograd and my time here in Heoi, I spent the year in the free city of Berlin. I was there too. That is where I got my feet wet as a shadow runner, you see. I ran with a team of anarchists for a time and learned the ropes of the occupation under their tutelage. What can you tell me about that team of yours? A good group of people. Disorganized to be sure, but capable. Sadly, we are no longer on the best of terms. What happened? An opportunity arose and I seized it. In so doing, I left Berlin for Hong Kong, and I did so without much advance notice. My absence made life difficult for them, and they blamed me for their hardships. You're a grown man. If you wanted to leave, you're under no obligation to stay. Thank you for taking my side, but I can see their point as well. As I said, my departure caused some complications for them. That said, I haven't lost any sleep over it. I merely did what I had to do. He looks away. A wistful expression on his face. Koshai scrapes the ground with its four legs, its sensors fixed firmly on you. Ultimately, I would say that my time in Berlin was quite educational, different from my earlier life in Russia, to be sure. As I said, the experience was invaluable. Ultimately, though, Hioi is probably better suited to my sensibilities. How so? Life in Hong Kong is more structured than it is in Berlin. Things make sense here in a way that the flux state didn't. I have an orderly mind, everything in its place, neatly labeled and filed away. This approach is what allows me to make sense of the world. To say that the people I knew in Berlin thought differently would be an understatement. Why did you move from Russia to Berlin? When we first met, I told you that I parted ways with Grishin Aviokor under unfortunate circumstances, yes? You mentioned it. These same circumstances led me to Berlin. I was wrong that I would not find a recourse in Russia. I suppose there's no sense in being vague. I'll tell you the story if you want to hear it. Please lay it on me. You may remember the self-repair system I mentioned the first time we met. The module that would allow Koshai, or any sufficiently equipped drone, to repair itself. I told you that my research had been lost. It was not strictly true. It was stolen by a pair of colleagues who I had long considered friends. They were researchers from my old lab. They turned against me, stole our work, in truth, my work, and defected. Why would they do that? Desperation and ambition. They had always been fixated on getting out of Russia. Grishin Aviacor was a nationalized corporation and they would never get rich as cogs in a government-controlled machine. In our project, they saw their key to breaking away and earning their fortunes. Never mind the fact that I was opposed to the idea. And so you follow them, I take it. Yes. The two had long spoken about moving to Berlin. Such was true of a great many academics in Russia. My homeland is a bureaucratic dictatorship, you see. There is little personal freedom and there are many rules to be followed. As you might imagine, the stable anarchy of the flux states can be an alluring concept to those who live under totalitarian rule. Berlin is much romanticized back home. So you assume that your former colleagues had run to Berlin. It was the only thing that I had to go on. At best I would find them, at worst it would be a good place to rebuild my life. 
and of course to establish the web of contacts that I need to track my betrayers down. There's a sequel, a squeal of tortured metal as Koshai drags its claws over the iron grating that covers the floor. Raktor glances down at the drone and it goes calm. He takes a deep breath and continues. It took me over a year to locate my former friends. It was a long, painstaking search, but I was nothing if not determined. I finally found evidence that they'd used my research as a bargaining chip to secure positions at Ares, and that they were here in Hong Kong. And so you came here to Hioi. I picked up and left the next day. My old team was upset, to be sure. Lucky Strike, in particular, howled for my blood. But I know where my priorities lie. And so here I am, and here they are, and soon I will be ready to act. I really must thank you for inviting me into the team. Your abilities will be invaluable when the time finally comes to make my move. Something tells me you weren't surprised when I invited you onto the team. You were waiting for this, weren't you? I thought that it might go over better if you believed it to be your idea. And it would seem that I was right. I am on the team, after all. Yes, you are. And you're right. I, for one, would be happy to help you. When you're ready, just say the word. Thank you, my friend. But this is a discussion for another day. We aren't ready to hit an Ares facility yet, and there is more intelligence to gather before we make our move anyway. When the time comes, I will let you know. This is a lot of information to give someone after one total run with them. I mean, I guess it's because he wanted to join them, but it seems a little sketchy to me that after one run, he's like, here, here is all my life story. What can you tell me about the colleagues who stole your work? Today, they called themselves Taylor and Hardingham. Those aren't their real names, obviously. They shed their former identities when they left their own lives behind. What were they called when you worked with them back at Grishan Avacor? It doesn't matter. Those men are as dead to me as they are to the world. My old colleagues no longer exist. Taylor and Hardingham are all that remain. They are targets now, nothing more. Oh, how wonderful it will be to find them. What a reunion we will have. This stolen research means more to you than money, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, much more. It was my life's work and it was important. Reducing it to a bargaining chip was a deadly insult, both to me and to all those who would benefit from my work. You say that with almost religious fervor. What's up, Splatter? Religious? No. Religious superstition is a relic of the past. I welcome the future. A future that my research was intended to help usher in. Let's see. Tell me about this future that you predict. Tell me. Are you familiar with the concept of transhumanism? The transformation of humanity as a species by technological means? Wapow! Huxley coined the term in the late 1950s, I believe. Was what? Yes, that's right. The seeds of the idea trace back even further to the 1920s and J.B.S. Haldane, but it was Huxley who popularized it. I know, right, Mercurius? And now the transhumanist vision has progressed beyond philosophy. It is fact. Look around you. Cybernetics are a fact of everyday life. The synthesis of man and machine is the crowning achievement of metahumanity as a people. Recently, Arvin Elrond defeated Choice of Robots and... Okay. I believe that we are well on our way to a truly post-human future, one in which the synthesis of man and machine is perfected to the point that the terms become interchangeable. In such a future, the capacity for unlimited self-repair would be indistinguishable for immortality. You can see, then, why the theft of my research comes as came as such a blow. My former colleagues hadn't just stolen from me. They'd taken my contribution to the future of our species and reduced it to a bargaining chip. Yeah, I get it. I'd be upset, too. I was more than upset, my friend. I was livid. I still am. But all be made right in the fullness of time. I am nothing if not a patient man. I can wait. And with that, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to bid you good night. I've taken enough of a break for one evening. There's still work to be done. It will be lax of me to put it aside any longer. Thanks, Ractor. It was interesting. Good night. That was interesting, actually. Now I got all the details. I know, right? Synthesis. The star oh, child will be pleased. Okay. Let's see what we got. What's up, Duncan? Oh, wait. I'm going to go back and do that in a minute. But not yet. What's up, Duncan? You enter Wu's cabin to find him moving through some sort of stretching routine. His muscles ripple as he flows tranquilly from one pose to the next. You look different, Arvin. Do I? Yeah. Like, I flipped forward a few chapters instead of turning a page. I mean, you look like you, just not the you I knew. Sounds like song lyrics. No, no. No more song lyrics for me. I gave up that dream a long time ago. Remember how Lockjaw used to make fun of my singing voice? He smiles. His teeth are perfect. He said I sounded like a frog with a hard on I thought my voice was distinctive. 
I mean, I'm no Maria Mercurial, but... So what about you? How are you doing? Hmm. Not too good, thinking about Raymond. I get that. Me too. That's one of the reasons I'm moving through my routine. It helps me center myself. Still think he's alive? Maybe. Good enough for me. We keep running, keep looking. He picks up an ammo box and begins using it like a dumbbell. By the way, I gotta tell you, you're good at running this crew, Arvin. Why, thank you. But there's something I still don't completely understand. What do you get out of being a Shadowrunner? Hmm. I'm trying to decide between freedom and truth. Freedom, I'm not a cog in the corporate machine. Sure you're not. Come on, Arvin, think. Of course you're a cog. Everyone's a cog. Whether you're working for them, consuming their crap, getting brainwashed by news media that they control, voting for the people that they put in front of you, or being policed by people that they own, you're a cog. And you're the lowest kind of cog. A shadow runner. A disposable asset. Sinless. Slithering through the cracks of society. Doing jobs that are too dirty for the cops to do themselves. You don't even appear on a corporate bank balance sheet. Runners can be more than that. They can move their own agenda, fight the power. I've never heard a story where the Shadow Runner did something other than kill someone, steal something, or perpetrate some other kind of shady shit. But good luck with that. I want to talk about you and me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess now's as good a time as any. You start. Seems like Carter's death hit you pretty hard. Yeah, she was a good one. We were a real team. Joining Lone Star helped me in all sorts of important ways, no doubt about it. I really embraced being a cop. I studied my ass off. But no matter how hard I worked, I was never more than a model cop with a brutal streak. There were plenty of assignments that were perfect for a big, mean orc like me. Assignments that would have fed my need to hurt people. But I met Carter about a year in, and she changed things. She talked about values and goals and priorities and constructing the life that you want to live. She was a real trip. Sounds wise. Huh. Never thought about that word as a way to describe her. Wise. From an outside perspective, I guess you'd say that, but to me she was just... grounded. She knew who she was, where she was, where she was going, and what got her there. Carter understood how the world worked, but compartmentalized it so she could focus on making a life for herself that made sense. She kept me focused. When Raymond asked me to meet him in Hong Kong, I had a feeling I was going to wind up going off the reservation if I didn't bring Carter along. And now she's gone, and here I am. You only took a step off the reservation, you could choose to step back too. You sound like her now. With Carter, there was always a choice to be made. A positive action you could take. You're not acting like the Duncan Wu that I grew up with. What made you decide to become a cop? I needed structure, bad. You know that better than anyone. I was already hardcore when we met, Mr. Ultraviolence. I'd do anything to get a rise out of the guys I was rolling with. Gouging eyes, inventing knees. So, inventing knees. Yes, Duncan, you were inventing knees. Inverting knees, curb stopping. That shit got me cheers. I was like a pit fighter, bloodletting for the crowd, and I learned to enjoy it. But I never learned how to block out the memories of their screams and I was lying in bed at night. The guilt started eating me alive, and then I was scared to be alone with my thoughts. So I tried to drown them out with all the things you drown things out with. How bad was it? Pretty nasty. But that was before we met. When we scotted together, and later when we were living with Ray, I was still a violent son of a bitch but basically under control. That was because of you, Thundercake. You were the voice of reason, and the brains. Me? The brains? Don't pretend you weren't the leader. You know how it was. When we were on the streets together, I was the muscle and you called the shots. You pointed and I hit. But later, after Ray got me some counseling, I realized I'd let you call the shots that I wouldn't have to, because I knew that what I wanted was wrong. By following your lead, I was deflecting my own guilt onto you. I could just knock heads and walk away clean. You know, don't look at me, I'm just doing what I'm told. And then you left. Without you there, I knew that I was in serious trouble. The poster boy for anger management issues. Raymond could provide a stable environment, a decent therapist, and money for prescriptions, but... You know Raymond. He's an egghead engineer with a philanthropic streak, not a drill sergeant. And a drill sergeant was what I needed. I needed structure and discipline in a way that he couldn't offer me. I needed a cage to keep myself in line. So I found myself a cage made of rules and procedures and training. Lone Star. Raymond helped me with my application and provided a decent character reference. I got in and it helped a lot. 
Lone Star got me where I needed to be. And now it's all gone. And you're back. You've been waiting a long time to ask me about the night I left, haven't you? I guess I have, yeah. It's about what you were doing before you got thrown at that corp facility. You said that you had a friend who was in a bind, but that was all you could say. How'd it go? Let's just say that we're not friends anymore and leave it at that. Whatever you say, Arvin. You ever think about when we were kids? I try not to. What are you talking about exactly? The time before he moved in with Raymond and Mrs. Mallory. Oh, the dark times. We're not exactly talking about an idyllic youth here, Arvin. Sleeping in dumpsters, running from ghouls, fighting over scraps, and defending your territory. If we hadn't found that spot in the abandoned building, found Lockjaw and Double Trey, we probably wouldn't be here. So weird to think about that now. I mean, you realize they were teenagers, right? Younger than Gobbit. They felt so old back then. But Lockjaw couldn't have been more than 17 tops. And Double Trey... Double Trey was only 13 when... Why were you thinking about back then? Just thinking about that thing DT used to say. Improvise. Adapt. Overcome. That's how you beat the street. I remember. I remember Double Trey saying that. It was while we were living between the red-hot nukes and the 162s, crazy-ass dwarf anarchists on one side and flesh-eating ghouls on the other. Those are the days that you long for? It was you and me, Duncan. Those other guys were important, but it was always about you and me. Survive and watch each other's backs. Yeah, I know. Just think about that last run. Oh man, you remember that Megatrid movie we snuck into that one time? The one where the mummy took over Chicago? Yeah, I seem to remember that you kept your eyes shut through most of it. That's the one. Completely freaked me out. I love how they're adding in these little bits. How they smoothly kind of, you know, fill in your histories. It's cool. I slept with a dumpster lid shut for a week. What a pleasure it was to go on a run that brought back such hideous memories. I still can't believe that you made a deal with that thing. I mean, it was a mummy, Arvin. You don't make deals with mummies. Ah, oh, fuck. I can't even believe I just said that. I didn't know that Shadowrun has dealt with crap like this. Can't say I'm a fan, Arvin. Not even a little bit. Anyway, enough about that. You need anything else? You think about getting chromed up? With Cyber? Oh my god, how many times are you going to ask me that? Oh, at least a couple dozen more times. You always have the best reactions. I told you one time I was thinking about it when I was 13. Let it go, I'm not going to pollute my body with that shit. You? I'm a shaman, Wu. We don't tend to go in for a lot of cybernetic augmentation. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. That's a good thing, by the way. Better keep yourself whole and in touch with the world around you. I may not have magic, but I know that's true. Let's talk later. Yeah, later would be good. Don't get me wrong, catching up is nice, but I'm not used to being as social as this. That's one of the reasons why it was so nice to work under Carter. We both appreciated long silences. Sorry, man. She seemed like good people. It's all good. She's gone and I've accepted that. I guess it's just been a big day is all. Anyway, good talk. I'll catch up with you later. See, I like Duncan. I, who was it? I think it was Messiah that I was talking to. Is like, oh, I like Duncan. Duncan's actually one of my favorite characters in here. I mean, you know, like, I don't know that he's at the level of, like... My favorite, I think, was... Um, oh, God. Was it Dietrich? Who's the guy... Who's the punk rocker guy from Dragonfall? Is it Dietrich? Is that his name? Dietrich remains my favorite character of any of the Shadowfall... Uh, any of the Shadowruns. Is it Dietrich? Am I am I right or am I crazy? Also, these people have a lot to say. Isabel is jacked into the octopus. Her body sits inert, her breathing shallow. As you approach, an image blossoms out of the largest of the octopus's view screens. Hello down there. It's good to see you again. Hold on a second. Okay. I haven't met your favorite character? Okay. Okay, let's see. You really feel at home in the Matrix, don't you? Actually, nice avatar. It's a good look on you. Isn't it? I've spent months customizing this avatar. She feels more real to me than my own skin. You really feel at home in the Matrix, don't you? You look happy in there. I suppose that I am. It's a comfort thing. As long as I'm jacked in, I can be whoever I want to be. Whatever I want to be. 
Out there in meat space, I usually feel uncomfortable in my own skin. I'd probably just live in here if I could. I've heard about Deckers who tried it. It never turned out well. Dehydration is a bad way to go. I know, I know, and of course I was joking. But truth be told, I do spend most of my time out there wishing that I were back in here. If you were a Decker, you'd feel the same. It's hard to live in a cage of meat when you know how sweet it feels to leave your body behind. She pauses for a moment, considering. Then her avatar shimmers forward, filling the screen. A slight frown crosses her face. You know, Thundercake, I've been thinking about the question you asked me a little while back. The one about the walled city. The, uh, the one that I dodged. Yeah, I remember. Look, I wasn't trying to cheat you out of your answer. I want you to know that. It's just that talking about the walled city is problematic for me. I understand. I grew up in the Barrens. I know how hard it can be to talk about this stuff. No, it isn't that. I'm not explaining myself correctly. It isn't that I'm tortured by bad memories or anything like that. The problem is that I can't remember my childhood. By the way, in case anyone's wondering why I'm talking in a more animated way with her, because um, people asked before, Isabel speaks in a very flat tone most of the time, except when she's in the Matrix. And Mitch himself told me that when she's in the Matrix, she's got a much more, like, vibrant personality. And so I'm reflecting that or trying to. I know, Thundercake. So, Thundercake. <laughs> I know, Thundercake, you guys. The Walled City, that entire chapter of my life is nothing but a blur to me. I can give you general information about life on the inside, but the specifics of my own experience are gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Do you have amnesia or something? Something like that. There were a variety of factors in play. The upshot of all this is that there are things that I can tell you about, but only a few, and only in bold strokes. Don't expect any personal stories. I couldn't share them even if I wanted to. So if that's okay with you, if you'll be satisfied with trivia and urban legends, then we can talk. Just say the word. Otherwise, well... At least now you know why. Yes, I know. I was trying to reach out to you guys is what was happening. How did you lose your childhood memories? I'd rather not go into it. It's personal. Suffice to say that I've never missed them, at least not until now. If you ever want to talk about it, I'm a good listener. Great. I'll keep that in mind. Give me what you can about the walled city. At this point, anything would help. All right. I can do that. Isabel's avatar turns, begins to pace on the screen. Where she steps, spider webs of light spread across the tiled ground of the octopus's sculpted matrix hub. When I think of the walled city, the thing that stands out the most in my mind is the legends. The mythology of the place. It's personal. If I hadn't lived with them, I might have found those stories fascinating. Did you know that Kowloon walled city is supposed to be cursed? That's what the locals believe. We had ghost stories and everything. Ghost stories? Our own homegrown legends about things that haunted the walled city. Demons for another place. The Yama Kings. That sounds like a, you know, mariachi band. The Yama Kings! Yama Kings, derived from the mythological judge of the dead, I presume. There's a lot of academic etiquette uses. That was where they came from, yeah. But the Yama Kings that we told stories about were their own things. Bastardizations of the original myths. It'd probably be easiest to think of them like urban legends. Our own little pantheon of monsters and morality tales. The stories are still clear in my mind even after everything that happened. Everyone in the walled city believed them. You can get out of the walled city if you make a deal with Fu Mang. Cut the hearts from the 44 people closest to you and bring them to him. He will reward you with riches. Don't go under the Yad Arch or Chan Ya will catch you. The Avatar grabs at the air, its hands leaving glowing trails as they move. She'll rip out your teeth, tie your tongue in a knot, and make you her slave for eternity. We had Qi Xiang, our own homegrown judge of souls. People would let themselves be flayed alive in hopes that he'd reawaken them in a better life. And we had Lam V, the Ebony Queen, who'd teach you to hide so well that you'd slowly mutate into a cockroach. It's all bullshit, of course, but everybody in the walled city believed it. I wouldn't write the stories off so easily. Magic is real, Isabel. Of course it is, I know that, but the Yama Kings can't be real. If they were, the body count in the walled city would be a lot higher. The Yama Kings are glorified kids' stories. They're make-believe. A fiction that my parents and neighbors invented to excuse their own actions. I can't get ahead because demons are keeping me down. Woe is me. Woe is me. It's almost embarrassingly transparent when you really look at it. Lam V turning people into cockroaches? It's just a Kafka-esque trope layered onto a morality tale. Wow, check out Isabel, like, laying on the freaking, uh, the academics. Chin Xiang, he's just a noobus with a different coat of paint. And you know that archway that I mentioned? The one that Qian Ya was supposed to haunt? I knew someone who found it. There is nothing on the other side but concrete. It's all superstitious drivel, Thundercake. The misery in the walled city isn't the fault. The fault demons. Fault demons! Fault of demons or devils. We created it and we perpetuate it. 
We blame made-up monsters for our own failings. There's nothing more pathetic than that. It sounds less like you're trying to convince me than it does like you're trying to convince yourself. I don't need to convince myself of anything. I'm telling you this for your benefit, not mine. Anyway, that's enough for now, huh? I'm sure that gives you plenty to chew on. My obligation to give you an answer is satisfied, I think, so let's talk about something else. Can you think of anything else at all that might help us? I don't know, maybe. I'll put some thought into it. After a moment, Isabel's voice pours through the Tridio speakers. On second thought, maybe I do have an idea. Are you open to taking on more work? Of course, kindly sending me new job offers all the time. This wouldn't be work for Auntie Cheng. Think of it as a side gig that you'd be doing for me. I think I've got a line on some software that could help us. I can't get to it on my own, though. It's a two-person job, at least. What kind of software? I know, exactly right. Exactly, Mercurius. What's up, Messiah? It's kind of hard to explain. It'd be easier for me to just show you. But trust me, it'll help. I have the run all planned out already. I've done the legwork, I know the location, I know the target. Just say the word and I'll send everything I have to your mission computer. You can look it over, weigh it, and decide what you want to do. Alright, deal. Send the file. Done. You'll find the pertinent documents waiting in your inbox. If you decide to accept the mission, just check the box in the message documentation. It'll ping my comlink automatically. Alright, can't wait to find out what this is all about. I'm sure that the briefing I sent you will satisfy your curiosity. Trust me, Thundercake, this is a good job with a solid plan behind it. You'll see as soon as you've read it, and speaking of which, you should go do that now. Say no more, I'll go check it out. Fantastic, I can't wait to hear what you think. Okay. So, wow, now the quests are starting to mount up, people. We got the two ones there, we got Kindly Chang who wants me to do the fancy dress party, and then we got this. Side quest thing. Gobbit, and then we're gonna go pick a mission, people. Gobbit looks up from a tented tin of oysters at the sound of your approach. Her rats, madness and folly, scurry from her hips up to her shoulders. Two sets of beady red eyes fix themselves on you. Two, um, Yama kings are kind of lesser horrors, lowest grade, but true rulers among other spirits. Hanito, is Yama kings an actual thing? Is it an actual thing in Hong Kong lore or in Chinese lore? I don't think I've heard of Yama kings. I'm interested because I helped teach a course some years ago called Heaven, Hell, and the Space in Between. Um, which dealt with a lot of sort of heaven and hell and then other mythologies. Uh, Robert Blake, um, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, stuff like that. So I'm curious about that. I'm curious if that's the case, that Yama Kings exist as a thing. Hey, Seattle. Oyster? She spears a gray lump of seafood with a fingernail, extends it to you. It smells like low tide at a municipal pier. Sure, why not? You pop the watery rout of flesh into your mouth and chew. An explosion of lukewarm brine is your reward. Good, right? Half-repressed memories of dumpster diving and the barons dance a merry jig in your brain as the mangled oyster slides down your throat. I've eaten worse. Exactly, right? It may not be fine dining, but it's seafood and it isn't made of soy. That makes it good in my book. She tilts back the tin, drains the remaining juice, and then flicks it into the overflowing bin at her side. So what can I do for you? Let's see. How do you like life here in the bolt hole? Such a terrible ship name. Uh, it's fine. Shaping up. Having new roomies is always nice. How are you enjoying your cabin? Comfy enough for you? It isn't half bad. Better than some of the places I squatted in back in the Barrens. I've heard stories about the Redmond Barrens. Sounds like a real winner of a place. Kowloon isn't any better, of course, but at least our little slice of home is safe. That's true. It's handy having a mob boss on our side. Yeah, handy. Auntie Cheng is definitely that. Don't know if I'd say that she's on our side, though. Yeah, I know what you mean. Of course you do. Let's change the subject, huh? I'd rather not think about the old woman right now. You know, the bolt hole's a pretty mediocre name for a ship. Ever consider changing it? Yeah, sure. Consider it a bunch of times. I never really cared enough to actually do it, though. You want to call her something else? I'm open to it. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. Here are the names, guys. Defiance, Revenge, Dowager Empress, Big Texas, and Bolt Hole. Guys, I have an absolute one that I'm choosing. Please tell me you figured it out. Google says they're kind of a thing. Oh, cool, Messiah. Okay. Please tell me, guys, which we what we should call her. I shouldn't be... I shouldn't have to... This shouldn't be a guess. You guys should know exactly out of that list of names what we should call her. Release the Kraken. Hell yes. Aye, aye, Captain. The Kraken it is. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. I think that the others will be happy with it. The Kraken! Yes! Yes, you guys are the best. I knew it was the Kraken. Okay. Let me see this thing about the Yama Kings. Yes, Kraken. See? 
you guys are so see this is what i've said i said you guys are the best viewers on twitch and this is why it's why you knew exactly what it was what's up libido grumbly yes clear see clearly kraken dowager princess but kraken is fine dowager princess is too like steampunk i don't know I, I i like steampunk don't get me wrong but it's not the right setting we do not need to paint the whole boat bright pink release the kraken damn it okay the ten yama kings judges of the dead each of these beings had his own court in the underworld the first judge sin kwang decided whether the soul should be released to a new life or passed on for judgment sounds like midas the second chi chiang held court over the corrupt and incompetent the third sung ti dealt with liars the fourth wu kwan with misers and the fifth yen wang with murderers Atheists were tried in the court of the sixth judge, Pen Cheng, while slavers appeared in the seventh, ruled by Tai Shun Kun. The eighth court, ruled by Ping Teng, judged those who failed to honor their ancestors, and the ninth, those of Tu Su, dealt with arsonists. If they survived their punishments meted out by these courts, it's like the nine circles too, souls passed to the tenth and final court, where the judge, Chan Luan, or Chuan Lun, made a decision on their future. On occasion known as Ten Yama Kings, Four Kings of Hell, Four Kings of Hell, Kings of Hell, Kings of Hell, Yama, 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 Universal King, Chinese Yen Lo, Yen Wang, Tibetan Chosrigal, Ji Shinrije, Fizz Grub, Emma O, Shin Ten Yen Wang, Shin Tian Wang, or Shi Wang. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really good, Libido. I'm digging it. I am definitely digging it. That's awesome. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the link, guys. That's interesting. All right, you said that you teach me how to be a better shadow runner. I'm here to collect. Still remember that, do you? Huh. I just sort of assumed that you'd laugh that off. No dice, wizened mentor. You offered, now pay up. Um, okay. How about this? I'll tell you a story about a run gone bad. You tell me what you've done in the runner's place, and then we'll compare notes on your answer. How does that sound? You tell me. You're the teacher here, remember? Right, it sounds good. Of course it does. So that's what we'll do. She sweeps a tangled rope of hair out of her eyes and back over one point to the air. After a moment of silent contemplation, she bites her lip and nods. Okay, so this is a story from early in my career. I was part of a team here in HK, but I did some occasional moonlighting for another group based out of Macau. I was a busy kid. Who was on this other team? Anyone I might know? Not unless you can talk to dead people. That was a spoiler, by the way. The run didn't end well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same way, Masai. I find it really interesting also. Anyway, the job was a hit on this tower. Sort of a trid multiplex slash apartment complex. I'm sure that they've got them in Seattle, too. You know the kind. Seven huge screens, monster concession stand, coffin apartments on top like barnacles on a whale. I lived in one for a while. Every time they showed an action movie, the walls would shake. Yeah, that'll happen. Our client wanted us to break into one of the apartments. The story was that an ex of hers, a guy named Boggs, lived there. She'd been cooped up with him until about a week prior. Wade Boggs? Then things went sour in a big way. She wanted us to get back some things that Boggs kept when he kicked her out. Scare the shit out of him, bloody up a bit, make it look like a robbery. You know the drill. Sounds more like a job for thrill gangers and full-fledged shadow runners. Yeah, it was a pretty bush league gig, but the pay was decent enough. Not the sort of thing you'd turn down. So anyway, Sibilance, that was our group leader, had a plan. We knew that we had to go in quiet because the Metroplex had a panic system wired directly to the HKPF. If we'd gone in shooting, we'd been drowning in cops within ten minutes. Sib thought that we could maybe take advantage of the apartment's terrible soundproofing and kick in Boggs' door when the movie got loud. we camp out near his doorway, wait for the ceiling to start raining plaster, then smash our way in with his neighbors none the wiser. Again with academic etiquette. So many academic etiquette calls. Yeah, it's pretty close to what John Wilkes Booth did when he assassinated Lincoln. Sib was an amateur historian. He used to bore the rest of us to tears, but I guess it could occasionally come in handy. Oh, they referenced Romance of Three Kingdoms? Nice, nice, nice. I've only played... I only played that game once, um, but I like one time, one period of time, and that was the Nintendo version. There was a game for the Nintendo, A Romance of the Three Kings for Nintendo, and I played that a little bit. That was pretty good. There was a game called Utopia for Intellivision as well that I should play sometime with you guys, just because I think you'd be like surprised about that. So, yes, only the dig so far. This is just me talking with everyone, Messiah. Then I have to go buy a couple of things, and then I have to check out the side quest and see which one I want to do. So we waited in the hall just like Sibilance planned. We had a guy in the elevator and another at the stairs. I was waiting by the floor's communal kitchen. Sib took up a position by the door. She had these cyber legs that she dumped a ton of Nuyen into. Hydraulic jacks, strength enhancements, the works. Girl could probably leg press a dump truck. Come to think of it, most of her plans involved kicking things. There's something a little sad about that. Hey, if that was her thing, I wouldn't question it. Yeah, you're very supportive. Me, I'd have preferred to work for someone who thought with her head instead of her robot legs. Anyway, we heard a boom from downstairs. Yeah, I know, I know. 
Well, I love the story, but, you know, it's it's fun. But I, I want to get into the next run. Felt the wall shake with a reverb. Sib wheeled back and gave the door a massive kick just as she'd planned. From where I was standing, I couldn't really see what happened next. I could hear a massive crack as her boots slammed into Duraplast. The door flew off its hinges. Exploded off might be a more accurate phrase. A second later, we heard an ungodly crash. Destiny of an Emperor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's... There, well, there was a... That's right. Destiny of an Emperor. Yep, that's right, Brahms. I think you're right. There was a moment of silence. Then Sib let out this little gasp. The apartment was in shambles. It looked like a hurricane had hit it. Everything was trashed. Everything but the door, which was miraculously still in one piece. Remember that this was a coffin apartment. It wasn't much wider than the door was to begin with. And Boggs, well, what was left of him was under the door, too. Oh, God. They cr... She blew up in the door and killed him. Oh, no. Yeah, it wasn't good. Boggs was dead, and the stuff that we'd been sent there to recover had been smashed to bits. And then the building alarm went off. So that's the situation. Our payday is smashed. My temporary teammates are all standing around with stupid looks on their faces. The cops are coming. I'm standing by the kitchen. What would you have done in my place? Let's see. Um, I'd have tried to improvise. Was there anything in the kitchen you could use to resolve the situation? Good thinking. As it happens, there was, and I knew just what to do with it. The thought popped into my head, and I just went with it. She tapped her temple with a smile. That's a lesson to remember, Seattle. The first answer that you come up with is almost always the best one you're going to have, so just roll with it. Don't second-guess yourself. Don't hesitate. Just act. You'll live longer that way. Got it. Now, when I think crowded theater, I think place where you can't shout fire because it'll cause a panic. And then I thought, cops don't charge into burning buildings. They help people get out of them. And as it happened, I had the means to create real, genuine fire sitting right across from me. A pair of industrial ovens. You set the building on fire? I encouraged it to burn. How could this go wrong? <laughs> Opened the gas fence wide, set the rage in a timer, and motored back into the hallway. The others had started arguing among themselves. Amongst themselves. I told them to snap out of it and follow me down to the lobby. We had to clear the hallway before an errant spark took the whole floor out. Unfortunately, the rest of the group wouldn't listen. Sib and the rest of the team were too busy arguing about the relative merits of her let's kick things really hard and see what happens tactical system to want anything to do with me. I shouted back to them that the kitchen was going to explode and continue down the hallway. Just like I'd planned, I'd get out of that run in one piece. So did every single one of the people in that multiplex. My fine plan worked beautifully. If the rest of the team had listened to me, they might have gotten out of the building too. Kind of a bummer that they didn't, but at least the run turned out well for me. Your team burned to death? Look, they screwed themselves over when Sib kicked in that door. They were in a heap of trouble, and what I did would have gotten them out of it if they'd listened to me. Know how I know? Because it got me out. They could have followed me, but instead they chose to argue until they exploded. That's on them, not me. Of course, I couldn't collect any pay because the run had been a disaster. But after the explosion, I got to ride in the front of the fire truck, and they gave me cookies and a blanket. I wound up dating one of those firemen a few weeks later. Oh my god. All things considered, it could have gone a lot worse. Gobbit claps her hands together and rubs them, a satisfied look on her face. So, Seattle, tell me, what was the moral of this story? What lesson was I trying to convey? Let's see. Go with your gut, I guess? That's right. Trust your impulses and don't be afraid to wing it. Almost any action is better than no action at all. Once you've committed to doing something, you've got to follow it through, though. No arguing or hand-wringing, just do it. If you get caught up in your own head, agonizing over past mistakes, well, don't be surprised if you wind up dead. A kitchen fire can take you down as easily as a cop's bullet if you stand around and let it. Are you certain that Sibilance and the rest of the Macau team are dead? They weren't with me when I got evacuated with the rest of the moviegoers. I never saw them leave the building, and I haven't heard from them since. I guess it's possible that somebody made it, but I don't really run in those circles anymore. Odds are good that if anyone from the Macau team did survive, they'd have died off by now from sheer incompetence. Shuttle running is an unforgiving business. You don't get to make too many mistakes. Exactly. Getting a date off is priority one. And cookies. Don't forget the cookies. Did any of this stuff in that story actually happen, or did you just make it up for my benefit? Seattle, I'm hurt. It all went down exactly like it said it did. Well, except for a couple of embellishments here and there. But they make it a better story. Artistic license and all that. Gobbit leans back and stifles a yawn. Madness and folly dart up to her left shoulder and lock their beady eyes in you. Hate to break it to you, kiddo, but I'm beat. It's been a long day. Lesson's over for now. We'll pick it back up next time. Watch who you're calling kiddo. I'm older than you are. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Scurry along now. Your mentor needs a rest. All right, let's go check the mission computer, people. Because there's a couple possibilities here. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, let's check the mission computer, and I'm going to decide here. So let's see what it says.
This is her side quest, job offer. A recording of Isabel pops into the screen. She stares into the camera, her eyes full of intensity. If you're watching this, you've decided to listen to my job offer. That's a good thing. I wasn't convinced that you would. She's still in the Matrix, so that's why I'm doing this. Our target is a local Decker, a former Wampoan. In the Matrix, his handle is Rhombus. Of course it is. He has the software that we need. I know, right, Gray? He, unfortunately, he's unassailable from the Matrix, and nobody knows where he lives in meat space. But I know where he's going to be. There's an event coming up that Rhombus can't afford to miss. He might actually be already be on his way there. As you're reading this message, Deckers from all over Asia, White Hat and Black Hat alike, are converging on the Harbor Spires Hotel. This year, Harbor Spires is hosting DeckCon, Hong Kong's largest annual decking convention. Hell yes! We're going to TwitchCon and we're going to take down a Decker! DeckCon, people! DeckCon hype! Rhombus is going to be there and that gives us an opportunity. We're going to hit the convention, find him in meat space, and get the software away from him. And we're going to do it quietly. Enclosed, you'll find a copy of the plan that I've worked out for the run presented in bulletproof format. Everything should be fairly straightforward. Isabel's image whisks off the screen, replaced by a blinking cursor. What's up, Eljor? As you watch, the screen begins to fill with lines of simple instructions. And it will have a ball pit! I will provide you and one other runner of your choice with visitor passes for the convention. I will proceed ahead of you. So, um, did you have, everyone say hi to, uh, lovely Mrs. Arf, by the way. Um, did you, uh, is there any food on there? Extra food on there? Okay. Hang on a second. Too many wires in the world. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'll proceed to you, right, you and one of the runner of your choice, the visitor passes for the convention. I'll proceed ahead of you using my own guest badge. I'll hide in the women's lavatory on the first floor. Enter via the kitchen, procure, uh, procure me a uniform from the catering staff. All right, good night, Sutibi. Get some sleep. Please be sure the uniform is size four. We will rendezvous. I will charge into the uniform, and using it, I will infiltrate the administrative wing on the sixth floor. You will proceed to the convention hall and await further instructions. Using the admin computer, I will identify Rhombus via his guest registration form. Once I've done this, I will alert you via comlink. I will upgrade your badge to VIP status, granting you access to the VIP wing of the hotel. You will tell Rhombus that he has been granted VIP status, offer to escort him to a complimentary hotel room. You will escort him to a room that I designated hold him there. I will jack out of the matrix and make my way from the admin wing to your room. We will intimidate Rhombus, beat the tar out of him until he gives us the software. We will tie and gag Rhombus and stuff him into a storage closet. We will not be gentle. It's okay if he starts crying. Anyway, please prioritize this. Actually, please prioritize this. I want to see tears. Software and tow will make her escape. Glowing text fades and Isabel winks back onto the screen. See, it's a simple plan, just like I said. We should be able to get through it without firing a shot. Yeah, I'm sure it'll work perfectly. So, will you do it? Will you help me to get the software I need? Let's take the run. The pre-recorded footage of Isabel winks off of the screen. A real-time feed of her Matrix avatar replaces it. Excellent. I knew that I could count on you. Saddle up, Thundercake. This is going to be fun. Okay. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to get some rest uh, in the boat here. Then we're going to go outside and we're going to buy some stuff. And then we're going to do a side quest. And i got to be honest, guys, I'm thinking about doing that deck con quest. I mean, I'm just about to go to Dragon Con myself. It feels feels like destiny. feels like destiny. So let me save it and then let me go, uh, let me go do that rest. You wake with a start, your limbs bound up in a sweaty tangle of linen bedsheets. An incredible sorrow swells in your chest. You feel empty, half-starved, and alone. Fragmentary memories of a half-remembered dream flip through your mind. They're already fading away to nothing. You close your eyes and concentrate, willing yourself to keep the dream from slipping away. Gradually, the memory comes back to you. The walled city. You are back in the walled city. You don't remember how you got there, but it couldn't have been any place else. Even the barons weren't so squalid. You remember craning your neck to look above you. The buildings that made up this part of the walled city were new construction, even cheaper than the old. Now their foundations had rotted out from under them, and the buildings leaned into one another like a gang of drunken men. A rain of plaster and asbestos sprinkled down, dusting your shoulders. Asbestos, nice. 
You begin to creep forward, picking your way past. You began to creep forward, picking your way past the piles of refuse and debris, past the pimps and the dumpster fires, the broken glass and the dirty needles. The air reeked of rot and sewage and industrial waste, a disgusting melange that caught in your sinuses and crawled down your throat. You gagged in the stink, but it didn't slow you down. In the back of your mind, you knew you had no reason to be doing this. There was nothing for you in the walled city. You shouldn't have been there. But the rest of you was hungry, unbearably, indescribably hungry. And that part of you knew that if you keep moving, you'd finally get to eat. As you forced your way deeper into the walled city, locals stood at their windows and stared. Inexplicably, some of them dropped to their knees. You kept moving. You could see something in the distance, a silhouette, something enormous, at least twice the size of a troll, but delicate. It was beautiful. The huge figure beckoned you, gesturing with slender limb. An explosion of warmth filled your chest, and you knew that if only you could reach it, your problems would be over. It, she, would make all of your sorrows disappear. You moved forward at a crawl, but the figure felt impossibly far away. You reached out, calling to her, and... And then you woke up. The empty feeling in your stomach slowly fades, taking the strength and vibrance of the memories along with it. Wow. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go buy some stuff, folks, and then we're gonna do this side quest. I also want to see if they renamed it. Yeah, they did. The original name has been sloppily painted over with black paint. Freshly painted characters have been recently done in bold brushstrokes and read Kraken. Yeah. Kraken. Kraken. All right. First thing I want to do is I want to get some better armor. So I'm going to go down here to where What's-Her-Face is. Well, I don't actually remember where the devil she is. No. Where is, uh... The heck is crafty again? I think she's at. Well, is she there? I'm trying to remember where the heck crafty is. Where is crafty? is crafty crafty's all the way right okay oh that's where she is that's where she is there we go okay thanks all right i want to check out armor oh i wanted to talk to her about something anyway right uh hey there i still don't know anything about the dreams i'm afraid i'm working on it though meantime if you want to buy something i can hook you up i do i do want to buy something that and also let's get this shamanic ritual garb and let's see what else I'm tempted but I'm not going to get that uh, I should probably get another weapon also, so I think I'm going to get... I'm going to get one of these. I want to bring one of these with me. Uh, tanky tanky. Nice. Okay. And... Let's see. I wish this would stack. Why don't you stack? Okay. Okay, that's all in the stash.
Oh, that's the mummy spirit talisman. That's that thing. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. So, we'll keep that in case we need it. Alright, I want to sell a couple things. Sell items. Let's sell that. What else? Let's sell... Okay. A mustache, yeah. Alright, now we're going to go get some guns. I want to see if I can get a better gun here. So... Let's see. Is it Jin? Who's the one who's got... Here, wait a second. Is it Reliable Matthew? Who's who's the... Uh, who's the guy who's got... Who's the uh, gun sale, salesman? Oh, this guy. Oh, they're in the club. Oh, that's right. That's right. The club. Yeah, you saw that I laid out. In 88. Okay, okay. That's right. I forgot. Thank you. Killaby, what's up, dude? Kill, how you feeling, man? Backroom of Club 88. Okay. Killaby, how you feeling, man? How you doing, dude? How is everything, man? The older troll woman is a striking Amazonian quality. When she was younger, she must have really turned heads. Can I help you? Do you work here? Work, eat, sleep, and crap here. This is my family's place. Me, my husband, and our two boys. Do you have business with me? I have no time for window shoppers. What have you got for sale? Firearms from all over the world, from Ares to Walther and everything in between. You in the market? Let's take a look. A little sore, but it wasn't as bad as you thought it would be. All right, cool, man. I'm glad. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that you are okay, sir. Alright, give me that. Ooh, you don't really have a better sniper, do you? Okay, I want to get, um, I want to get, <coughs> there it is, um, so can someone tell me what is the default weapon, oh, are there really, Hanito? Okay, okay, that makes sense. Can somebody tell me if random, um, can someone tell me what Duncan's main weapon is, what is his weapon that he uses? Does he have an assault rifle or something like that? I can't remember what he uses. Or is it a submachine gun? Like, what does he use? Because I want to get him a better weapon. I also could get a better pistol, I suppose. But that seems like kind of a waste at the moment. Duncan has an assault rifle? Okay, thank you. Assault rifle. Assault rifle. Assault rifle. Yeah, I know he has a stun baton. Assault rifle. Wow. Oh, required data jack. No, he does not have a data jack. Uh, let's see. Semopal. Do you know what, um... Yeah, I'm not taking... Yeah, but I'm not going to be using Gobbit. Um, do you know... Does he have... What assault... Does anybody know what assault rifle he has? The only thing I don't like about this game is I, I wish there was a way to be able to see what your team has without them actually being in the team. Do they? I don't know. Is that true? Do they take care of upgrading their own gear? Is that true? That would be really awesome if they upgrade their own gear. That would be lovely. Is that true?
their gear upgrades. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, then I probably will save my money then. It scales with you. Okay. Come back anytime. Anything else you need? What can you tell me about Hioi? There's only one thing you need to know. The corporations do not rule Hioi. We're under Kindly Cheng's umbrella and our Yellow Lotus soldiers protect the docks and maintain the peace. But we're not triad members and they don't own us. Hioi is a crossroads where goods change hands and deals are made. Kindly makes the market, but we, the families, make it happen. Families rebuilt this place and it was left to rot. Strong families like mine, and we protect our own. Outsiders and cops know that tangling with Hioi is more trouble than we are worth. The triads know it is better to work with us than against us. And now you know these things as well. You do well to remember them. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. you again? A wiry elven woman leans over the bar, propped up on one elbow. She glances back at you over her shoulder as you approach, lifting a half-empty glass to her lips. This is totally a backer. The selection here is total crap, but it's cheap. I hope you're not looking for quality or you're going to be really disappointed. Damn, and I was hoping for some classic cocktails. If you ask real nice, I think they got some tonic water in the fridge. Aside from that, you're as likely to get a drain cleaner as you are a splash of bitters. Even a simple Manhattan's probably beyond the means of this joint. Call me X-Flow, by the way. Maybe we can help each other. Nice to meet you. I'm Thundercake. I've got good eyes for people in the business, and believe me, you smell like Shadowrunners and Nguyen. Plus, everybody here has been talking about Kindly's new hired help. I'm out here for work. If you need any backup, I'm available. What's your specialty? I'm what the eggheads call a mystic adept. Career expense. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Kind of a physical adept magician. I throw spells, and I can kill with a touch. I'm rarer than unicorns, my friend. Cheers. Where are you from, anyway? All over, really. Born and raised in Sydney, but ever since I was 15, I've been traveling anywhere there's work. Not a whole lot of opportunities for a street kid whose only skills relate to beating people up. I lived in Paris, London, Vladivostok, Caracas. Hell, I even spent a year in Johannesburg, but Azania is full of assholes. Yeah, my name is Cake. Thunder Cake. Cantonese is pretty good, I don't hear an accent. That's because it's chipped. My only concession to cyberware. When you move around as much as I do, linguists pay for themselves pretty quickly. They're not perfect, but they get the job done. How'd you get into this life? I grew up on the streets, running with gangs. Turns out if you get in enough street fights and have magical potential, things just naturally express themselves. Once that happened, I realized I could change a lot more than the protection rackets I'd been running. And greetings, Mr. Cake. Besides, it's not like I know how to do anything else. I'd never been to school. I'm sinless. What else am I going to do? Panhandle for change? Shake down stuffer shacks for beer money? Well, thanks, mate. I'd rather life fast, hit hard, and burn out. Any good runner stories? Yeah, I got a couple. There was this one time I signed on with some mercs in Eastern Europe. They had a job to do near Krat... Uh, Gizentite. Krasnodarsky Cry, lifting some Abscanian military software. The plan was pretty simple. We'd halo jump from a drone on the Russian side of the border, hike in toward the Abscanian research facility, and blast our way in. The Abkaz forces were supposed to be Matrix hotshots, but crap in ground combat. Simple, right? No plan ever survives first contact with the enemy, though. Turns out the Abscanian army had contracted out base security to Winter Systems. We started getting cut apart before we'd even breached the first cordon. Did you have to bug out? Uh, the mercs were in pretty dire straits financially. It was a do-or-die situation for them, literally. They owed too many debts, and if they couldn't deliver, they'd have been killed. So we pushed in. We were down to five of us by the time we got into the main facility. One of the mercs, Vaklov, was a rigger. We were hunkered down in a vehicle bay while the Decker did his business, and Vaklav realized one of the APCs hadn't been properly locked down, and it was still gassed up. Came out of that base with a 30mm cannon blazing away. Our exit was down at the coast, a riverine patrol boat the mercs had on standby. It was some nervous fighting, but we managed to get out. A bit full of holes, sure, but we survived, and that's what counts, hey? See you later, x -Flow. See you. You know how to find me if you need me. All right. Let's see... I already did this. Alright, I don't want drugs. Good. Good. Lovely. All set. Okay. So here we go. So we've got the um we've got three missions basically. 
And just as a reminder, by the way, if you're new to the stream, I hope you like what you see in here. We'll follow. My name is Arvin Elleron. I play all sorts of different games, but I tend to focus on story and narrative-based games, RPGs, things like that. I'm playing Shadowrun Hong Kong right now. Later this month, we'll have a Fighting Fantasy gamebook uh, playthrough. We'll also have a special... Um, uh, a special voiceover event, thanks to the Patreon that you see right up there to your... There. You see uh, up at the top right of your screen. Um, thanks to the Our Vocalists, which is what we're calling um, the... Uh, which is what we're calling the new team um, that consists of uh, Mr. George Ledoux, Trendane, Russ Guberman, uh, and Rob from Game Crashers, along with possibly someone else that we'll talk about. Um, and uh, in addition to that, we have different dev interviews that we do, stuff like that, um, and even a short story reading and things of that nature. So if you want to know more, follow the stream, support the Patreon, and thank you guys all for being here as we get set up here. Okay. So let's save this, and then I have to decide... I feel like I'm going to do... I feel like I want to do this side quest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this side quest here, which is um, the DECCON 2056, because that really intrigues me. I want to do that, and then I want us to nominate the games that we're going to have me play. So let me, let me do that first. Yeah, I got the sense that it was... Uh, you have to be careful. All right. Deccan. All right. Obviously, we're taking Isabel. We are going to take... Oh, wait. Sorry. Always have to start with Duncan first. Isabel. Vat. I can't take... Uh, I can't take Ractor? Really? I can't take Ractor. Oh, man. Man, why can I not take Ractor? It's obnoxious. Hmm. Well, that's the second half. Hey, what's up, Aklaba? How you doing, man? Why didn't the crew let me... I don't understand why I wasn't able to pick something for the stash for the crew. I don't really get that. A chartered bus carries you from Kai Tak to a mid-range hotel in Sen Juan. We're going to TwitchCon, guys. You can have Rockter, but no Duncan. Yeah, no, but I prefer Duncan, though. All around you, the happy chatter of your fellow passengers fills your ears. You hear tech speak in a variety of languages and dialects, talk about new lines of drones and decks, arguments over innovations in data check technology, and baseless speculation about the next season of Urban Brawl. Your guest badge, a glossy slip of laminated paper emblazoned with a flashy logo, hangs in a lanyard around your neck. Your ticket into the convention and the only disguise that you should need. The bus drops you in front of the Harbor Spires Hotel, and you promptly circle around back to find a service entrance. Isabel should be waiting for you inside. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So, let's see. Oh, that's random enough. Okay. Okay. Here's the situation. I wish I had room for one more thing. Hmm. Probably don't need that many fetishes. I'll leave one of those behind for the stash. And uh, let's go with that. Oh, I hear you, man. Yeah, I know you don't like Duncan. I don't I don't get it. Uh I don't get it, Messiah. I like Duncan. I don't understand. I don't I do not understand your problem with Duncan. Okay. Here we go. It's kind of weird that they wouldn't have you like 
sort of equip up and everything before you leave, but... The service entrance to the Harbor Spires Hotel looks like any other. Scuffed walls coated in chip paint. A floor of well-worn hardwood. A time card reader hanging from the wall at a slight tilt. Nothing about the dingy utilitarian confines of the room that you're in hints at the elegance and fine decor of the hotel beyond. Reminds me of that dump we squatted in back in Bear Creek, the motel with a raccoon problem. Little bastards kept me up half the night every night. I swear that one of them was eyeballing me. Your earpiece crackles to life. Isabel calling from the woman's lavatory. Thundercake. A burst of static fills your ear, obliterating Isabel's voice. A second later, she cuts back in. You in position? Because my spell casting isn't high enough, libido. I need uh, I need a five spell casting. I think my spell casting is only three. I'm a shaman. I do more of the summoning thing than the spell casting. Let's see. Um, I'm here. Yeah, you're kind of breaking up, though. Yeah, I know. Connection here is crap. The comms keep cutting. This doesn't bode well. Aren't you going to be giving us instructions over the comm? Yeah, hang on a sec. We try to boast our signal strip. The sound cuts out entirely for a good five seconds. When Isabel's voice comes back, it's half again as loud as it was before. There, that's better. What a pain in the ass this is. There's way too much interference coming from the show floor. We aren't going to be able to rely on our comm links for this. I'll find us a workaround. I hope that you do it fast. The, this entire plan hinges on our being able to communicate. Like I said, I'll find a workaround. For now, let's concentrate on the task at hand. The catering staff should all be in the kitchen, hauling trays of steamed clams and aperitifs at the convention hall floor. I'm going to need you to find a way to get me one of their uniforms. One that will fit someone my size. What if there aren't any that'll fit you? There will be. Hotel guidelines require the catering company to have uniforms suitable for all metatypes on hand for major events. It's a contingency thing, just in case they need to bring in temp workers on short notice. Alright, alright, I'm on it. Good. Oh, and Thundercake? We aren't going loud yet, got it? Whatever you do, don't start shooting. We can't afford to send Rhombus running before we can get him cornered. Right, no shooting until we have Rhombus. Got it. No shooting till Rhombus. It's like no sleep till Brooklyn, but much less interesting. No shooting till Rhombus. I wonder if I could battle, like, uh, if you could find his nemesis parallelogram. Wait, what? This panel controls simple building maintenance and safety features. While the panel's admin level user interface has been locked away behind a biometric fingerprint reader, a skilled decker could easily bypass such a restriction. View archive work manifest logs. Huang, millions. The damn sprinklers went off again. The entire kitchen was flooded and Chef Bun quit. We're gonna have to go with third party caterers to the big event this weekend because we sure as hell can't steam a few thousand clams without any kitchen staff. Interesting. It's Arv with pointed ears. Yes, it is. It's me. What's up, Shatter Mage? What's up, Shatter? How you doing, bro? Hi. The Harbor Spire's kitchens are a whirlwind of activity. Attractive 20-somethings in white catering uniforms dash in and out of the room, their arms laden with heaping trays of steaming shellfish. One man stands still amidst the chaos, the eye of the storm. His white coat is at least half again whiter than those of his subordinates, and his collar starched as stiff as a board. The floor manager notices you and his eyes narrow. He stalks toward you, practically frothing at the mouth. Uh, you can't help but notice the embroidered corporate logo on his lapel. Pastry magic and more, fine catering. The image is completed by a stylized rendering of what appears to be a frolicking kitten standing aside a pair of shooting stars. Actually, Rogan, uh, the, w the one that um, people are going to vote for is one that I will try. But again, there's never any guarantee that I'm going to go, that I'm going to, you know, all I have to do is try it. There's no guarantee that I'm going to finish it. The two ones that chat voted on, I did finish both of them, but there's no, you know, guarantee that I'm going to do them. The one that I want to play after this is Alpha Protocol. And after that, I want to try a couple of the Sherlock Holmes games. Then we've got Sword Coast Legends. Uh, maybe Arkham Knight will be finally patched and not just pulled out the minute it's patched. Um, and uh, the second Phoenix Wright game. So, yeah, a lot of stuff there. And the Metal Gear games are looking interesting, too, I have to say. You, what are you doing in my kitchen? Convention goers are not allowed beyond the show floor. I'm here at the behest of my employer, Wuxing Incorporated. Perhaps you've heard of us? Yes, everybody's heard of Wuxing, but what do you want with me? Etiquette corporate, baby. Our CEO, Mr. Wu Lung Wei, likes your food. He'd like to offer you a permanent location in one of our corporate food courts. Well, yes, of course. I, I'm so sorry for the rough treatment that I gave you when I found you in my kitchen. Normally, I would never have... Of course you wouldn't. Now, I'll need to bring my employers one of your uniforms for branding purposes. <coughs> 
One of our uniforms? <coughs> yes, of course. Take as many as you need. He fumbles with the device in his wrist, and a door in the corner of the room opens with a click. Thank you. My employers will be in touch with your contract. Well, thank you, sir. This is the happiest day of my life. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. I got the uniforms. Uniform dwarf size. Could have done a drone, too, but... Oh, yeah. Now I just have to give it to Isabel. So far, so good. Corporate etiquette for the wins. Perhaps you didn't read my name tag. My name is Cake. I'm on the menu tonight. You're not Thunder Cake, are you? Every time I see that name, I need to start going Thunder. 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 Uh... Thunder Cake. Ho! Wow, guys. Look, it's TwitchCon. TwitchCon. Look, guys. TwitchCon. Shatter, this is exactly what PAX looked like, right? Right, Shatter? This is totally what PAX looked like, right? Thundercake! Ho! Oh! In fact... Okay. The only thing is, I don't think this is how you add a command with Arcanus Bot. not quite right. Yeah, I figured it out. I just can't add the uh, exclamation point. Yay! Thunder! Thunder! Thunder cake! Oh! <laughs> oh my god, is there is there a is there a Thundercat emote? There isn't a Thundercat emote, is there? Is there a Thundercat emote? Please tell me there's a Thundercat emote. Also, I totally missed whether you said this was like PAX. That's close to the Twitch booth. That's the Nightbot. Okay. Is, the, is there no, like... You could search FFZ for one. I just went... I, there was a Thundercat emote. That would be amazing. That's not it. Cool cat... Thundercats is too old, Smacky Butts. What's wrong with you? That is... That is insanity. Sup, Isabel? You enter the women's restroom. You enter the women's restroom to find Isabel waiting impatiently for you. Her guest badge dangles from its lanyard at a canted angle and the clumped ropes of her hair look frazzled. At the sight of you, she steps forward. You're here. Good. I was getting tired of hanging out in the ladies' room. You have the uniform? There you go. Good. Good. This will work. Alright, I'm going to change into this thing and hightail it to the employee's only door on the far side of the convention hall. They'll let me in even without a badge. They'll just figure that some rich guy wants a drink. 
Where's the VIP area? On the other side of the convention floor. I'll have to cross the show floor to do it, but that should be safe enough. Nobody pays attention to the catering staff at these things. That's the plan, Messiah. The plan. So I'll make my way across, pass through the door, and take the elevator up to the admin wing on the sixth floor. All that you need to do is take your position and wait for my instructions without raising an alarm. Pretty simple stuff. Should be foolproof, assuming that you don't screw anything up. Do you have any questions? Have you figured out what you're going to do about that spotty comlink connection? Yes. There's a demo kiosk near the VIP entrance. It's running some new Matrix avatar editing suite or something like that. The software is called Perfect Persona. When I get to the admin area, I'm going to patch myself into the Perfect Persona console and we're going to communicate through that. It isn't a perfect solution, but it beats having to deal with a dropped connection. Just be sure to grab the kiosk when you're in position. Don't let anyone else get to it. What should I do between when you leave and when you get in position? Walk the show floor. Mingle. Try to look like you belong here. Just try not to say or do anything that'll stand out in a bad way. You're supposed to be a hot new decker in town. Try to act the part. It's like mentioning Led Zeppelin to a tween. Yeah, no, I knew about the Arcanist spot. I just forgot. I just forgot. I, I just forgot what the command was, Shadowed, but yeah. Smacky, there is a modern Thundercats. You are so wrong about that. Thundercats is not old school. It is old school and new school both. In truth, the cartoon, the old cartoon is actually very dated, but... <laughs> But uh, that thunder, thunder, thunder cake part is still awesome. What am I supposed to do in the show floor again? Wait by the VIP area door. When I identify Rhombus, you'll apprehend him and tell him he's the lucky winner of a complimentary VIP pass upgrade. You'll escort him through the VIP doors into a room that I'll have empty and waiting. And we'll all get the software from him together, beat him up, and stash him in a closet. No more questions. Let's hit it. Let's do this. Do, 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 do. So you admit that people like the old Thundercats. You acknowledge this. What are you doing it here, shady man? A sketchy looking man in a long shabby coat stands in the middle of the bathroom floor, teetering on his feet. He blinks at you through red rimmed eyes crusted over with sleep. Exactly. Hey there, are you, uh, the Imperator? Because if you are, I uh, got your stuff. Yup, that's me! Great, great, great. Hey, you want to see the whole stock? Or do you just want to buy the items that we discussed? Let me see your full stock. Ah, drugs. Nope. Oh. Yeah, that was good, real good. Good doing business. Convention goer. This dwarf doesn't have any obvious headwear, but his hands are lined with artfully designed induction pads. He looks up from his place in the noodle line and gives you a nod. Line starts back there. Better take your place now if you want to get in on this. The food court gets busy around this time of day. It's a standard three-day pass hanging on a lanyard embroidered with the Shyaway's logo. The name on the badge is Grimson. Want to compliment you on your cyber hands. It's nice work. Thanks. They're custom. He lifts his right hand to the light. The honeycomb structure of the induction pad circuitry glints under the smooth plastic of its surface. It's surprisingly hard to find induction pads that aren't hidden under synthetic skin. They're a work of art. Who designed them for you? I know a guy out Neo Tokyo way. Works at one of Renaku's Chiba clinics. I got him to make the things for me. Cost an arm and a leg. Or both arms and no legs if you want to get technical about it, but it was worth it. What's worth ordering from the vending machines? Nothing. But getting a bowl from the noodle extruder is a deck con tradition. You just do it whether you want to or not. Isn't the show catered? Why even bother the vending machines? Tradition, like I said. The convention is under new management this year, and they're trying to go all upscale on us. We're trying to show that we don't need all that. Give me a cheap bowl of extruded noodles, and I'm a happy man. I don't need an underpaid teenager in a clown suit to bring me clams and call me sir. Hang on, don't the show organizers own the vending machines too? Yeah, and the irony isn't lost on me. Political statements aside, I want my noodles. They're terrible, but they're the right kind of terrible, like synthetic cheese and fat-grown chicken. They're science food, and I love them. You would have to. Yeah, you too. Hot noodle dispenser, complete with extruder settings for ramen, lami, and juk sing, and shahe fen. Okay.
Software demo station, the newest iteration of Shyways is Sculpted, Sculpted System Authoring Software. A display devoted to a third party cooling system for terminals and cyberdecks. Your comm link crackles to life with an ear splitting hiss, Isabel. Okay, I've jacked into the admin initiative, but I can work with it. Are you in position yet? No, not yet. The waiting position near the VIP entry and use the kiosk. Remember, perfect persona. Perfect persona kiosk to talk to you. Copy that. While you're getting there, I'll start working on getting a VIP access and locating Romb. Isabel, can you hear me? There's no response. Wait near the VIP entrance. If there's anything else you want to see on the show floor, you should probably check it out now before we get the ball rolling. Your call. We'll look around a bit more before we hit the kiosk. An elderly Decker with a nickel-plated data jack turns to face you, smiling. Ain't this a hell of a thing? Love this show. Love this show. Lots and lots of shiny toys. You here to see anything in specific? Got my eyes on a couple things this year. I'm going to check out the fairy light booth, of course, and Fuchi's doing some interesting things with miniaturization. You know, when I was just getting started, it would have taken an entire warehouse full of machines to match the computing power of the PDA on your wrist. But no, scratch that. They wouldn't have come close. Technology's come a long way. Sure has. Sure has. Anyway, I've taken up plenty of your time already. I'm sure that you've got exhibits to see, unless you wanted something else. Thundercake, and you are? Call me Turtle! Been going to DeckCon for damn near 20 years now, and it's never looked half as nice as it does now. Really? Yeah, the show's really gotten big in the past couple of years. Lots of corporate money flowing into this thing these days. I've heard that the guy who first organized the show sold out to some big promoter and took home a six-digit paycheck. Lots of young guys have been bitching and moaning all over Shadowland about that, but not me. I've been around long enough to know the score. Someone offers you that kind of money, you take it. Where'd you get your handle from? Turtle's a funny name for Decker. An old, old piece of software. Something that went obsolete well before your time. I guess I'm showing my age, but something about that little cluster of pixels always made me happy. Gotta keep moving, Turtle. Enjoy the show. Bye, then! Alright. I think we got the idea. That was cool. <laughs> I know, right? That's exactly what I was thinking, Aklava. It looked like it. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah. The perfect persona kiosk flickers to life at your approach. A debug menu pops onto the screen along with a text prompt in all caps. Thundercake. Enter the following key code into this kiosk. Blah, da, blah, da, blah, da, blah. You tap the code in the kiosk keyboard. A moment later, a series of five loud popping sounds rattles off in your comlinks earpiece. Isabel's voice fills your ear crisper and cleaner than it was before. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me, Thundercake? Yeah, I hear you. What was that? A command line code for the kiosk to connect with your comlink via direct link. This way, we can bypass using a comm signal entirely. Not bad. I know. As long as you remain within a couple of feet of the kiosk, we shouldn't have any problems. Wander too far outside of that range and you're going to get static again. So basically, I can't move from this spot. That's what I said, right? Now that we're all linked up, give me a second and I'll locate Rhombus. Uh-oh. What the hell? He already has one? How the fuck does Rhombus merit a VIP pass when I don't? Wait, he's already in the VIP area? I'm twice the decker that he is and everybody knows it. What makes him a VIP when I'm not? Calm down, Isabel. At least we know where he is. All right, I know which room he's staying in now. Just need a few minutes to get you your VIP upgrade. That wasn't good. What do you think we should... A series of clicks interrupts in your ear, call cutting Duncan's sentence short. Your PDA begins blinking. You're receiving a video chat request. Oh, boy. Isabel blossoms onto the screen along with a pair of towering security guards. Oh, God damn it. Oh. Has there ever been a Shadowrun in the history of Shadowrun that didn't go south? Any run? The line that connected to the admin terminal hangs loose from its socket. I'm going to ask you again. What the hell are you doing in here? Take your time and make sure that you're telling me the truth. I'll know if you don't. I, uh, well, I was just looking for the person who ordered this coffee. What, you were looking for in the Matrix? And besides, you don't have any coffee, so try again. You, well, I need to, um... All right, Isabel, listen up. Say what I say and you'll be fine. Say okay if you understand. Okay. Last chance. Start talking sense or spend the night with the HKPF. 
My co-worker sent me in here as a prank. I feel like such a fool. My co-worker sent me in here as a prank. I feel dumb. We don't have time for this. Just kick her out and be done with it. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm going to let you go with a warning this time, but only this once. If I catch you anywhere near this room again, I'm turning you over to the police. Got it? Right, Gray? But I... Don't argue with her. Just let them kick you out of the room. Yes, sir. Good call. The line goes quiet as she moves out of the server room. What a damn nightmare this is turning out to be. I'm sorry, Thundercake, but I couldn't get you your VIP access. You got Rhombus' room number, right? Yeah, I got it. I can take you right there. There's only one problem. Without VIP access... Sorry, I'm <clears throat> doing it wrong. Without VIP access, you can't open the door without sounding an alert. The picture on your PDA flickers worryingly. A moment later, Isabel's image turns to the screen and lets you through from this side. That's what I'm going to do now. I'll make my way down to you and open the door. I lost a bit of that. Are we going to have communication problems again? Maybe. A bit. I'm still using the kiosk to talk to you, but now that I'm not jacked in, I can't route messages to it directly anymore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <clears throat> Please stay put. If you lose the kiosk, we're going to have serious communication issues. Got it. Oh, and I, uh, I may need your help if thrown into more people up here, Thundercake. In case you hadn't guessed, I'm not exactly a social butterfly. And if things go loud, I'll really need your help. I've got your back. Let's do this. No, 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 no. Uh. Isabel's outline goes fuzzy the moment she sets foot into the elevator. A loud, rhythmic whooshing sound dominates the low end of your PDA speakers. It sounds a bit like the rotors of a helicopter. Heads up, Isabel. We're getting a lot of interference here. An elf in his mid-twenties steps aside to let Isabel at the floor selector panel. He looks wired, jittery stim to the gills, most likely. There's no telling how long it's been since he's gotten a wink of sleep. Isabel punches the button for the ground floor. Do you guys hear this music? Working the show, huh? That has to be hard. I'd feel tempted to blow off work and go check out the kiosks. Maybe take in a panel or two. Let's see. Say, who says that I haven't? Isabel, what's wrong? Ken Ding, huh? That's an interesting street name. Been decking under it long? A couple of years now. Longer than anyone else to use the handle. Just smile and nod, Isabel. You're trying to go unnoticed, remember? I know who you are. You're the one who shut down the Kowloon City power grid six months ago. Oh, God. Oh, God. Stop, Isabel. Yeah, that was me. <clears throat> Let's just keep that between ourselves, though, all right? That little stunt screwed over a lot of local deckers. A couple of them soaked up nasty hits of dump shock because of it. You wrecked the grid while they were jacked to their home machines. My team was in a bind. They needed a power outage right then and there, or they were cooked, so I gave them one. It was the best solution to a bad situation. Let's leave it at that. Oh, boy. There was this Decker. She lived out in Hio. I called herself Spinster. She was a good person. Now she's in the ground. She never came back out of the coma that your stunt put her into. Isabel, this is going off the rails. Isabel, stay on target. Slowly, Ding extends his hand towards the emergency brake. Snap out of it, Is. We aren't here for this guy, and we can't afford to start shooting yet. At least that's what I heard. I, <laughs> I'm just a caterer. I'm not a Decker myself. Yeah, sure you're not. You've come to get me, haven't you? To take revenge for your friend. Did her pretty pillboy out a contract on me? Is that it? Yes, I took the contract, but I've decided not to go through with it. And the elevator stops, walk away, and don't look back. Yes, I took the contract, but I decided not to... Oh, God. Please, Isabel, don't be doing anything stupid right now. Kending is in mid-sentence, practically frothing with rage. Did what I had to do. If you were in my position, you'd have done the same if you'd gotten them killed. There was no third way out of that scenario. 
I would not have. Isabel, stop. Listen to me. What? You're crazy. An insane person. And when I get out of this elevator, I'm going to the hotel security office. Apologize to him. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I just get upset sometimes. You're damn right I'm offended. You came at me like a crazy per... Oh my god, this is annoying. This is getting old. As quickly as it went, the picture flickers back into your PDA screen. I was this close to telling him, if you do anything, the yellow lotus is all over you. I was this close to telling her to say that. Can Ding look calmer now. The elevator is descending. Remember what we discussed. You keep your cool and this turns out well for the both of us. We live and let live. Understood? Yes. I didn't want any trouble from you in the first place. I'm just glad that it was all misunderstanding. Please don't take this the wrong way, but I'll be happy if this is the last I ever see of you. Feeling is mutual. Enjoy the rest of the show. I'll get a move on, Isabel. Uh, hi guys. Yeah, I was so close to just being like, you know what, screw this, Yellow Lotus. But I was like, that's the nuclear option, because if he decides, if he just pushes him, then there's no coming back from that. Oh boy. The hallway ahead is blocked by a trio of struggling bodies. A blackout drunk troll hangs slung between a pair of cursing security guards, one male and one female. As you watch, they struggle valiantly to drag her down the hallway. Don't let her go, Ho Yi. She has the strength of ten men. Yes, sir. How she got roped into troll holding duty is anyone's guess. Clear the hall. You, dwarf girl, help me. These... These dragons want me to leave because I'm a troll. Uh, what's happening here? <laughs> I know exactly. Oh, hi. None of your business. You're not even hotel staff. You shouldn't be back here at all. Oh, boy. He hugs the troll's left arm to his chest with all of his strength, desperately trying to weigh her down. She lifts his feet a few inches off the floor, then slams him back down. He lets out an audible whimper. Now clear clear the way and report to your manager. Quit fighting me, damn it, before I talk to him for you. The former door guard stares at Isabel. Recognition dawns on her face. Hey, I remember you. You said you had to meet some caterers up on 6. What are you doing down here? Let's see. I was just checking to see if anybody down here wanted a drink. Just checking to see if anyone needed a drink. You, uh, you want a mojito? You, uh, you shouldn't hold still, be here, not even to offer drinks. Ignore these pigs and help me. I'll take the run on the left, you take the right. The troll bucks against the guard's grasp, nearly breaking away from them. This is going to go very poorly. What's up, Royks? They double down in their attempts to hold her. To hell with this. It's a waste of time. We've got a schedule to keep. What do you mean? What schedule? Uh, say that you misspoke. Quick, what rhymes with schedule? I owe scr Oh, God. Great. Oh shit, take her down! Take them both down! Great. Lovely. Spectacular. Nice work, Isabel. Way to go. Jackass. Break it down. Not good. Very much not good. Nice shot. All right, Isabel, you jackass. Yeah! Grenade hit! Oh, yeah. What do you mean I managed to screw it up? How did I manage to screw it up? This is Isabel's fault. I didn't screw up anything.
Really hope there's no more security coming that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Mosky. Damn it, Isabel. Great shot, Isabel. Nice. Ow. Oh my god. This is very, very bad. Seriously, you couldn't take him out with that? Really? Really? That's really? Seriously? I'm just. I don't know. I mean, why is my rate so low? Maybe because I'm right. Oh, that's why. Because I'm running right top of them. Okay. Don't miss. I need you to kill him. Yes. Boy, did I need that. Oh boy, did I need that. Nice shooting text. I can't shoot with the grenade because I'm going to get the troll. Could you please kill this guy off? Good gravy, man. better kill him here. Nice. What's up, Angletown? Ha ha ha, Smacky. Good man, good man. Alright. Okay. Please, please do not miss here. Please. Thank you for not missing. That was close, people. Way to foul that up, Isabel. Idiot. I was all mission impossibling it. It was great. 60 out of 60 through 3 out of 40. 17 out of 30 is not wonderful. Um, I would like you to use that on Thundercake. There we go. If I just thought of a rhyme for schedule, I know, I know, right? It is true that it all went south there. I should have been like, the schedule, vegetables, that's what I was saying was vegetables. I needed vegetables. This is so going to be an attack. Look at all this cover, look at all these cover areas. Oh my goodness. Yep, I blame Isabel. And the thing is that her one of the, you know, that grenade launcher killed off someone already, but then I couldn't do because of the stupid troll that was there. Who, by the way, I don't know what happened to the troll. I guess he just ran off. He's like, all right, I'm good. I'm out. Peace. I blame alcohol and Isabel. Sup, bro? 
As you burst through the door, you find yourself standing face to face with a small, heavily tattooed man. Right, exactly, Shatter. Geometric shapes of all description. It's like in Mass Effect 3, when you're walking into the place with, um, well, I don't want to spoil it, but you're walking into this one place, and as you're walking through it, you know, you know, you see everything. You're like, I'm going to be fighting there, 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 and there, and there, you know. Geometric shapes of all descriptions trace their way from his temples down his cheeks and neck to his shoulders. His eyes continue the motif. Each of his irises is a slanted rectangle. Wow. Ramus looks at Isabel and sighs. If he's surprised, to Siri doesn't show it. You finally want him back, huh? The memories that we locked away. I always knew that you would one day. But you got so hostile after the procedure, I didn't think you'd come around this soon. Oh, get bent, Rhombus. I got hostile with you because you got hostile with me. Like hell I did. I tried to give you some advice, as a friend. If memory serves, you called me a patronizing bastard and slagged my deck. Was I just supposed to take that without punching back? Hang on a sec. I called you a patronizing bastard because that's what you were being. You wouldn't have taken that tone if I were a guy or an orc or a troll. You talked down to me like I was your little sister or something. Well, guess what? I'm not. Whoa, hold up. I talked that way to you because... Also, punch back? That's a funny way of putting it. You tailored an ESP to troll all of my posts on Shadowland? What kind of prick would do a thing like that? The kind whose cat you would kill, you little monster. Captain Whiskers was just a house cat. He didn't have anything to do with this. Is this a roommate fight? Really? No, the straw poll is going to be set up as soon as I finish this mission kill. This is a fight between roommates. Isabel killed Captain Whiskers. <laughs> Thug life. That wasn't me. I would never hurt a cat. If I were going to have someone killed, it would have been you. You two sound like bickering teenagers. Actually, oh, I'm so tempted. Pipe down, both of you. We're going to hash this out together. You're the muscle, I take it. You and your jarhead friend over there. She brought you along to beat the information out of me, huh? It's just a job. Nothing personal. Typical. I'm just a man with a job, and Isabel tells me you have something you can help me do it. Let me ask you something. How many people did you kill to get to me? I wonder what kind of death are we looking at here? I'm assuming that the gunshots in the hall were your doing. It wasn't my choice. It was just how things went down. Yeah, sure. Help! Security! Somebody help! They can't hear you, Rom. Know why? Because we killed them. Now give me my goddamn key. Rhombus doesn't respond other than to increase the pitch of his screaming. He looks like he's on the verge of hyperventilating. To hell with this. Let's hit him like a piñata until software comes out. Sound like a plan? prefer to take a lighter touch. This guy's terrified. Just look at him. I'll give her what she wants. I'll give her everything. Good. Now put your money where your mouth is and give us the software. There. Just check your in inbox. You have it. Now for the sake of whatever friendship we might have had, please let me go. He wasn't lying. I've got the encryption key. Let's stuff him in a closet and go home. Encryption key? I thought you said he had software that you needed. Um, technically I have it. Up here in headwear storage, but I can't access it without the key. And thanks to Rhombus here, now I've got it. Isabel, what was this really about? Recovering my old memories, the ones about the walled city. I still have them, but I can't get at them. Rhombus did that after I moved here. At your request, you little psycho! You begged me to do it! That's actually true. We were friends then. She looks down at Rhombus, who lies whimpering on the floor. Now we're not. And that's why you're getting stuffed in a closet. You set upon the grim task of shoving a protesting Rhombus into his own room closet and latching the door. You managed to get him inside without having to break any bones. He'll probably have bruises tomorrow, though. Come on, Thundercake. We got what we came for. Let's go ho- Called it! Who called it? Heavy footfalls advancing down the hall. You hear shouting like the crackle of radios, the HKPF. Oh, that son of a bitch. Rounds must have called the cops. He's probably got a panic button or something. Get ready, Thundercake. We've got company. Of course we have company! Of course we have company, Isabel. Why wouldn't we have company? Of course we do.
What is this? I bet it's Shadowrun. Stop blaming me. Blame Isabel. Hashtag blame Isabel. This is totally her fault. And incidentally, Isabel is going to get stuffed in a closet herself. Neutral turn. I was making good discussion choices. Okay, Messiah, congratulations. You are you are to awesome. You are to awesomest Shadowrunner ever.